All right, guys, we're back with bronze to GM. And you know what? We started um, in the previous part of Platinum doing a mech build where we wanted to be harassing, but we weren't making any units that are good for straight up fighting at the start, which meant we needed... By the way, check out the two names. That's hilarious. Warshot versus Warthog. <laughs> but we weren't making any um, any units that, that, that defend us, which meant our defense had to be very flexible. And inherently, we needed a bit better game knowledge and, um, you know, to, to do some nice reactions and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to show you guys a slight variation. We've written this in the notes uh, of the Bronze to GM doc down below that previous build order for Mech. And most of the build is the same. Most of it is the same. What's going to change for us here, as I get it up on my second monitor, which I should have already done. Um, what's going to change... As I, because I'm trying to remember exactly what the opening was from last week. I am a simpleton. Um, all that's going to change, guys, is going to be that we are se seriously just going to be safe. We're going to be safe. We're going to build a cyclone into a tank as our standard. Now, if you want to be really awesome and, and adjust versus Zerg, you know what you guys can do? Don't build a cyclone because it's kind of bad versus Zerglings. It's still good if they poke you with a few Ravages. But you can just go straight tank. So against Terran and Protoss, though, we're going to go one Cyclone into one tank. Why do we need a Cyclone? Uh, really, really simple and obvious. It shoots Oracles down. It shoots down early Metavac drop, early Viking that tries to land in our mineral. It's, it's an in-between defense against some other stuff. Uh, I did forget to send my SCV across the map, guys. So we're just going to try and send that in. And uh, do we build a Reaper normally? I don't think we do. We go one Marine Command Center. Okay, cool. Guys, oh my god, it's been a bit of a break. A little bit of a break, hasn't it? A little bit of a break. Me memory is so bad for the build order. Now, remember, with this one, guys, we're still doing the very quick factory. Very important for mech play is to get that factory up straight away. The difference is we're going to build a tech lab next. And remember, the depot is delayed because we are not building out of the barracks for a while. Okay. So then we're going to go, I think it's gas then depot is what we decided was the way to do it. But I am a little worried that that might be a bit late. Let's see. We'll find out. You're trapped in here with me. Okay, my opponent's expanded, guys. So let's try and run my SCV home. Okay, let's try and put this here. And we want to build. Let's put two guys on gas as well. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap that over and build a Cyclone immediately and get a Starport. Problem is, go, guys, you don't have enough for the Starport straight away. You want to go Cyclone before Starport. So small adjustment because that Cyclone is gas heavy, right? And indeed, second gas before Depot was the right call. And you start building extra Marines just so you've got a few extra fighting units. So the Starport gets delayed just a little bit with this build order. But like I said, we're going to get a Cyclone into a tank. That's going to keep us safe. What does that keep us safe against? Everything. Cyclone is just such a good early unit. It's a little fragile um, for its cost. So you do need to be very careful. Don't leave it sitting out front of your base. Always leave it somewhere where, you know, you're going to have time to react with it. Okay. So we're going to build a tank after that. We've got the starboard on the way. And what is the point of this new Bronze to GM Platinum Mech section that we're doing today? Well, we're doing a safer opening. But unfortunately, it does have a problem, guys. And that problem is we're giving up a whole bunch of all the awesome harassment, aren't we? We don't have Hellions. Normally, we'd have Hellions already building up, ready to dive into our opponent's base. So this is kind of shite. It's kind of shite, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a little bit shite. Um, it's okay. So we'll put this tank here at the front. Let's get a Liberator still so we have something to harass. And you're going to notice you're very gas-starved at this point. So we're still going to build our third command center, still nice macro. But looking at this, you can see that it's like, oh man, we don't really have that much production or anything like that. We've got a tank, we've got a cyclone, we've got a liberator. So we're doing a really chilled out, very turtly style. And over the next games, we're going to go the cyclone, the tank. We're going to do battle cruisers. We're going to do widow mine drops. We're going to do a whole bunch of other stuff. So anyway, let's take two gases after our third CC. Remember, we want these depots out on the edges so we can kind of spot drops coming in. That's why we've got this guy down here. We don't want to wall off first, Heron. And we can send a Liberator, and we can even just queue that to go into the back of this Terran's base and siege up from the start. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so put guys on gas. Two on each gas geyser. Um, get another depot building in the main. This will get us unsupply block anyway. And we want to build a reactor. Now, why do we want to build a reactor, guys? Put a tank up in the main as well. Just to help defend there. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, we need to make sure we get extra factories pretty quickly. So we can keep building tanks for now. But the moment we get a bit more gas, and these liberators are slowing that gas down. Let's queue that liberator to the bottom side. So this is going to be real hands-off, just like macro mech with the, the lightest, most low micro harassment, right? Just liberators, which I'm not going to micro at all. But check it out, guys. We've got a bit of extra gas. So we're going to come over here. And we are going to just take a look at that. It looks like mass marine for my opponent. Nice to see what he's up to. We can put our barracks down here as well. So there we go. We've got two more factories. Our starport can build another reactor as well. We can put more tanks down there. We've got a third base that can go down here. Third base, fourth base, fifth base. So let's go down there. And now we can go... And we were doing one armory, so let's keep doing one armory, guys. And how many factories? I believe we were doing six previously. Yeah. Yeah. So we want three more factories at some point here. For now, though, we've just got all of this. Now, because we don't... No, if our opponent's going banshees, getting an engineering bear at some point in there is good. Normally we delay that a lot, but obviously if you know your opponent has a high chance of, of getting out those units, you might want to do it earlier. We're going to put this tank on the high ground. Notice with mech, we never grab our whole army and just move it in the open because we could get jumped on, okay? Anyways, let's queue up lots of hellions. Let's queue up another tank. Do, 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 do. Let's lift off this starport, by the way, because remember, what's the most important thing? More factories. We need those three extra factories. <clears throat> and we want two reactors, four tech labs, right? So we've got a second reactor there. Let's get our tech upgrades. And gases on the third is probably the most important thing. Also, we're not having any more command centers finished for a while. So Barry, uh, Bruce and Gary, sorry. Bruce and Gary down there need to get that going. Now, depending on you guys, some of you are going to have a, a much smaller appetite for risk of drops and all this sort of stuff. Oh, we forgot to queue this Liberator in, by the way. Let's just do that. So you're going to be doing things like this. Um, so because this is really important, we found out, I've been watching a lot of games recently. And if you're in Silver League, you need to defend from the edge of the map where nothing can come from. Stop doing that. What is wrong with you guys? Jesus. A drop can come in on this edge. If we really want to go ham, we can build turrets like there. And then any drop coming in is not going to get past. Likewise, what's the other extreme edge? Sorry, guys. I apologize, Silver League. It's fine. You guys you guys agree. Um, on this edge. This way, we've zoned out the edges of our main and our natural. And our army can focus on the front, which is exactly what we want. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's just scan our opponent's stuff, see what they're up to. Looks like marines, tanks. Cool. Now, the one weakness with this army is he's got medevacs, and we don't actually have any anti-air, right? Other than our... <clears throat> oh, shit, I forgot to put on gas. That's really bad, guys. I'm like, man, why is my gas so bad this game? It seems even worse than normal. Build an extra depot there. Um, we're just building lots of tanks and hellbats, right? But I think you can mix in either a Thor or two or a few Cyclones. It'll deal with Liberators, it'll also deal with other flying units. So that's a nice thing that can kind of help you out. We'll even drop a Supply Drop there just to help out. So if we want, <clears throat> um, we could just add a Cyclone or two or a Thor or two. I think we'll add we'll add two Thors this game against Terran. Now against Zerg, we like to rally lots of Thors to deal with the Muta Swap, right? Upgrade. But yeah, I, I think against Terran, tank count is very important. And notice we're just morphing them to Hellbats. We've got plus two attack on the way. Gary and Bruce need to keep going. What server are we on? Feels really laggy today. That's weird. Anyways, um, you could take more command centers, but remember, we're focusing more on just hitting this really, really tight attack. And I rally Hellions because they get to the front faster, and then I transform them into Hellbats, okay? If you guys prefer, just build Hellbats from the start. It's totally fine. Why is walling against Terran bad? Well... It's just our general rule in all situations. We only wall off if we're going to have the range advantage. Because what does a range... What, what does a wall off do? A wall off, as I spread some marine spotters out, it basically just creates an advantage for the army with the longer range. A wall off allows the army with the longer range to sit behind said wall and do its business. So guys, we've got a big army. Plus two won't be ready on time, but that's okay. We know where his third is. We've sent some marine spotters out. 
And we're going to move forward to siege up this base. Okay. Actually, you know what? I think we want to push towards the natural. Is even more important with mech. So what are we doing, guys? We're rallying tanks. We're rallying hellbats. <clears throat> um, and if we really want to have a follow-up, we can go fourth base and fifth base on location behind it. All right. So let's go, guys. So we're just going to move forward. We're scanning ahead of our army. Opponent seems to have nothing here. Oh, he's got some. And we're just going to siege up there. Hellbats seem to be doing a good job of tanking. Um, these guys seem to have rallied across there. Okay. And these guys can all come forward. So we're just going to do a cheeky F2 and then A move. Keep scanning there, and let's leapfrog. Shift click, shift click, and then we know there's a planetary up here probably, so we're going to just say go there. Why? Because they should be in range there. We can move on a little bit closer as well. And there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at the build order. And kind of go, okay, this was the most vanilla, boring version. Our opponent didn't really do anything this game, so it worked out okay. Um, they didn't really force us to react to anything at all. But what did we do? We literally just made two liberators. Now, those two liberators are very, very gas heavy. So what did we find out, guys? We were gas starved this whole early game. And this is a very common thing when you are playing with mech. So what's one thing we could have done to be a bit more safe, a bit more well-rounded? Well, we only built three Marines. I'd like us to build four Marines every game. And at four minutes, let's put a bunker down. Then if we have a bunker at the front, four Marines in it, as well as the tank, the Cyclone, building more tanks, I think this keeps us incredibly, incredibly safe. Now, there's also gonna be options if we wanna do like a Hellion drop. We can build a reactor off the barracks, swap off after a tank or a tank and a Cyclone. Cyclone and a tank, usually we go Cyclone first, right? We can swap the factory off, build four Hellions, and then do a Hellion drop. We could do that off this opening as well, right? There's a lot of things. I think the important thing to remember, though, is in terms of past this early stage with what we're doing with these buildings, it's the same order. It's what comes next. Third command center, immediately into double gas. My double gas, my SCV production was a little slow this game. You can see we take these gases a few seconds here. You want that as quickly as possible because tanks just chew through your money. And especially if you choose to build an extra third unit, it feels like it really hurts your transition. So it's going to help you out if your opponent's really in your face trying to kill you. Do you really need it that early? Yeah, probably not, guys. I don't think so. So I think in general, we probably don't need to be uh, building the, the the extra tank there because it. what's more important is getting three factories up so we actually have a good amount of production, right? And, and getting forwards into that position where, okay, we've got some harassment, but then behind that, we've got three, three command centers going up, four gases, three factories pumping out units to keep us safe going up to six factories, getting our armory to add the upgrades, engineering bay at some point when we feel like it, zoning out the edges from drops and air-based harassment. We don't want to do that too early. What do we always see, guys? Mech players, their command center is barely down. They're already building an engineering bay and building turrets. And you know what the problem is with that, guys? You're just so passive. You're just sitting in your corner. It's so hard to secure your third base. Your factories are never going to go down because you're spending all your minerals on your turrets and your eBays. You're never getting the gases up on your natural. You end up in this position where your build has no sharp edges. It's you sitting in a corner, cowering, building defenses. What if your opponent takes three bases really early? What if they take four bases really early? It's not going to go very well for you. Now, this was a really good response from my opponent by the looks of it. Just kind of pulled the SCVs or pulled some of them. Got the Marines. So my opponent was totally solid here. And you can see they were actually doing a very safe, just Marine tank focused build themselves. So the opponent had a, a really, really well-timed third CC, but they were incredibly passive in how they played. They didn't get up any map control, no harassment, no vision. So it was a little unfortunate for my opponent because as much as they're clearly practicing their macro and they were doing okay in that regard, um, they didn't turn it into anything. Wait, they sent a drop out? Did, was there a drop in this game, guys? I don't think there was. Did they F2 this home? Wait, they changed the path. They changed the path. And then they F2'd at home when they moved out to take their third. My opponent doesn't use control groups. Yeah, no army control groups for my opponent. Oh, that's sad. My opponent wanted to do a drop. 
But, uh, but they F2'd at home. <laughs> That's so sad. I was like, my opponent did try to do some pressure. Yes, good on you. Anyway. Um, why mech versus Terran, says Apple Seuss. Uh Mech is a solid style. That's it. A lot of people always ask, why are you doing this versus this or that versus that? Guys, we're teaching just solid play styles in general. Um, we're teaching mech for every matchup in, in, in uh, Platinum League. You can do mech any matchup, any league. Arguably, uh, it's weakest versus Protoss. On the other hand, until you get to really high level, Protoss players are pretty bad at dealing with mech because they don't see a lot of it. So you can still absolutely make it work. Um, mech is just in general a good style where you have the best defensive power. And you also have really smooth abilities to build lots of harassment units. Because the best harassment units for Terran come out of the factory and the starboard, which are usually central buildings in your next step of your mech development anyway. And they're also gas heavy. Guess what? Guess what else is very gas heavy? Lots of factories and upgrades and that sort of stuff. I can't see myself doing TVT without Vikings yet, says Proformist. Um, why? Why would you build Vikings with this? You can, if you want, for sure. I mean, we could add some Vikings in. Essentially, adding a reactor there and getting some Vikings would be nice. But we're not going to do that against Protoss and, or Zerg unless we have a really good reason to build Vikings, which there's not many for, right? Why would we build Vikings versus those guys? If there's a War Prism being annoying, we might build some Vikings. If there's Colossus, maybe, but tanks deal with Colossus just fine. It's not really necessary, and they're very expensive units. Um... So if they do go, say they've got Viking Raven advantage, it doesn't matter because we're just going to use scans for vision anyway. Um, and while Vikings are very nice, if they get liberators, we're just going to deal with them with like Thors and, and Cyclones. So yeah, it's an interesting point because everyone's like, well, I always see, I always see people, you know, they're like, I got to have the Vikings, right? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I feel like just having tanks and hell, that's actually is going to win you games, guys. Yeah. Opponent's supply and money was better than most plats. Opponent macroed really well, like we said, but they just um, they just mass marine medevac. So the problem my opponent had is if you are going to jerk it in your corner of the map and macro guys like this, you need to be playing a composition that is going to match your style. So my opponent should have been going, what has Vibe taught us? Thor Hellbat. If my opponent went mass Thor Hellbat, something that's more AMU friendly it would be better. Marines are not a unit that you sit at home with because they're very positional. They've got mobility. They need to be spread out in giant areas. They're good for dropping, harassing, backstabbing, surrounding. And especially against mech, you'd like to have a lot of marauders mixed in or these hellbats are going to just, just cause you a lot of trouble. <laughs> so this is kind of unfortunate. My opponent had great macro, great supply. What did they not have though? Good production. So my opponent had six barracks, which is kind of an awkward barracks count. Normally you go five barracks and then you go to like eight barracks after that, right? With extra tech labs usually. Um, sometimes it's pure reactor versus Terran when it's bio versus bio, but only one factory, only one starport. So lots of SCVs, right? They had uh, they had 78 SCVs. The upgrades weren't that fast. They had a lot of bases. Overall, I'm impressed with my opponent's play, but there was no sharp edges to it. So guys, if you're going to just sit in your corner of the map and macro, you need to actually do some stuff. You need to actually uh, make a composition that's going to play to that late game stage. Double armory, mass door, something like that that's going to perform pretty decently in most situations without much control. Yeah. What do you recommend Zerg to build versus mech? Uh, in our last Bronze to GM, we taught just Roach Ravager Baneling. Roach Ravager Ling Bane. But um, in the past, I've always been a, a really big believer in Roach Hydra Viper, and I still do really believe in it where you just get lots of vipers and you just abduct, 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 abduct. And it's a great way to practice your viper micro. And a lot of people are like, I can't use vipers though. And I'm like, well, there's only one way you're going to get better. Um, the trick is to rush your hive though. You need to have that hive. A lot of people tell me, they're like, man, I tried it. Vipers just don't work. And I look at their replay. I'm like, dude, your vipers are popping at like 14 minutes. You know, you could have these out at like nine minutes, right? <laughs> you know, you, you can be abducting their army well before their max and just grabbing tanks to their death. Pull back, get more energy, do it again over and over again. And it, it feels really fun. So yeah, I would I would suggest abduct is very fun or just uh, Roach Ravager Bane Link could be really good as well. Blinding Clouds are very good versus tanks. Yeah, if they clump up a lot, 
and you've got a good engagement. The problem most people have is they, they Blinding Cloud when it makes no sense to Blinding Cloud. Like if your army, Blinding Cloud doesn't last very long. So if you don't actually have a good angle to get your army on top of theirs, Blinding Cloud does nothing, right? Say you're attacking through a choke point, you can abduct six tanks into you, kill them, pull back. It doesn't matter that you're in a choke point because you bring them to you. But I see people drop a Blinding Cloud or Blinding Clouds all across the army. And by the time their army gets on top of the tanks, the Blinding Clouds run out and their army gets minced. So just be a little bit discerning with that. For most people, I suggest specializing in one spell or the other. And I think Abduct is the more reliable spell, but they're both very good. All right, so it looks like most people voted Banshees. So we'll start with Banshees. No, it's not going to be Ban Cheese. Ban Cheese is when you proxy the starport next to their base to get those Ban Cheese, those cheesy Banshees in there as quickly as possible. We're just going to do Ban She Harass. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Ban She. All right, so we'll do some Cloak Banshees this time. I'm um, going to be a little bit more micro involved. And you know what? That's really good because we're playing a Protoss player. And if our opponent skips detection, it's really powerful if they like use oracles and phoenix or observers really well. We don't do that much damage, but we at least kind of pin them at home a little bit. So let's go for our same new safe mech opening here. And uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, obviously, we always get questions, guys. How do you get the, the frame rate and the, the server and stuff? Just uh, control alt F. That's built into the game. You don't need to add anything. It's not a mod or anything. It's just built into StarCraft. Always has been. Lovely little thing. Now, someone in chat suggesting, hey, how about fast banshees? Um, oh, that could be really cool, but we're actually trying to show a really solid play style, and, and fast banshees is going to be a, an insane commitment. So, right now, we're teaching people just the fundamentals of how to lose, use banshees. Fast banshees sounds fun. Um, is it going to be a good strategy for most people going bronze to GM, going platinum league to, to diamond three? Probably not. So, I think we're going to keep it a little more uh, toned down to start things off. All right, guys. So we're going to go up now. Against a Protoss, we like to scout down here. The reason we're going to scout there before coming back to our side of the map. So the reason we're going to do that <clears throat> is um, a lot of the time they wall off the jumping pledge over there as we get to higher levels. So we want our SCV to go over there to check. Oh, is the gate in the side core there? Oh, we should be good. Now we saw a probe coming, so we're just going to send this guy over to fight. That probe's moving very sus. Go ahead. Just gonna block him from stealing the gas there. All right, SPD Marine plus orbital. Gonna try and get some more hits on him. <clears throat> sure thing. It's to block my expand. So we see a nexus, we see a gate, we see a cyber core. This looks like a very standard build, guys. Huh? What's going on? Get our command center down. And awesome. Marine can go at the front. Bring our SCV home. Command center upgrade complete. And we can get our factory there. Then we build a tech lab afterwards. We can grab our Marine. He just chills at the front there for now. Make sure the probe can't come in. And then we want to take a second gas. And then we take that depot right after. So remember, we're going to be very quick on the depot after the second gas. We don't want to be getting supply blocked. complete. And remember, we're going to lift that off. And we want to go Cyclone straight away. I'm going. This better be good. Got oh, we got him. Did a bit of stutter step there. Very nice. All right, we're going to put two guys on the other gas. And we can build more Marines while we're waiting. And remember, we want to build a starport. But we need 100 gas for the Cyclone. It's very important because there could be an Adept or a Stalker coming in. And the only really thing that's going to shut that down completely is going to be going the Cyclone, okay? So we're building more Marines, we're building Cyclones. Only drop mules in the high ground for now until your Cyclone's out. If we drop it on the low ground, it could get killed by a Stalker or an Adept coming in right now. Okay? So we wanted to go Cloak Banshees, guys. So after this Marine, we can build another uh, Tech Lab if we want and go Cloak Banshees. Or after the Cyclone, we could swap over. A few different ways we could do this. I think we'll just build the Tech Lab there. We're just going to keep... Oh, hello. Well, that's fine by me. That's fine. Okay. Command center upgrade complete. So now our main saturated. We can drop meals on the natural. The cyclones here, creating some safety. Let's build a depot up there. Just keep Add queuing on. up SCVs, complete. and then we can put the banshee down. Now keep in mind, guys. Tanks expensive. Cyclones expensive. All this stuff is very expensive. We're gonna build a bunker. 
we don't have enough for Cloak right now. So we're going to start our Banshee, and we're going to have to pause our factory production for a little bit here. Once again, let's just put that guy on the ledge, because that kind of covers the natural and a lot of the main. And let's get Cloak. So it's 100 gas for the first Banshee, 100 for Cloak. This ain't cheap. This ain't cheap at all. Okay. Now we can build our third command center. I like to build it in the back, so it's hidden from their scout. And it's safe, easy to protect there. So once we put that down, remember what do we do? Double gas is the biggest priority, and our factory is naturally, remember I said in the last game, has to idle a little bit if we want to actually be able to get this sort of harassment, right? So let's queue up the second Banshee, first of first and foremost. And you know what, actually, we'll, we'll go into the main base. Yeah, we're going to the main. Guys, there. Uh, let's build some more depots because we are going to be supply block momentarily. All right, so we'll build another tank in a moment. Um, let's get a reactor. And remember, what's the next thing we need? Two more factories. It's going to be really important for us in the near future. So, a little bit of a supply block. Um, you could argue because we're playing mech, we should wall off first Protoss, right? Because we don't want to let zealots in. Last game was TVT, so not building a wall off, a bit of a mistake. If we get like charge dot all in or something like that, we'll be in big trouble. So we're gonna wait for two banshees, guys, and then our um and that's because they one shot workers, and we're gonna rally a third one up over here so it can go into the third base or the natural. But these guys are gonna go on a control group, cloaks ready, but we're not gonna show it straight away. We're gonna just focus on our macro first, okay? We're gonna build two more factories. Keep building SCVs. We're going to make our one armory. Keep building tanks. Add the factories to the control group. Add the armory to its control group. Now, let's get Gary and Bruce non-stop building depots just to make sure we never get caught. These guys are going to start going in. So what are we going to do? Queue up SCVs. Queue up a tank. And let's micro. So we want to click in between to clump them up. We want to turn cloak on. And what are we going to do, guys? Focus fire. So, move a click, move a click. Or if you want to do easy micro, we're just going to shift a left click. You could do shift right click. The reason we do a left click is then if we misclick, they'll get an A move. That looks like some psych some guys came in here. Looks like my opponent wants to maybe try and kill me with some zealots. So, look at that. I'm just going to tell these guys to hold position there. Oh my, my opponent's trying to kill me. So, uh-oh, luckily the tanks on the high ground do cover it. We'll move another tank down. And the Banshee's going to go into the natural now. And let's, once again, let's just do right-click this time. Oh, there's observers. So if there's observers out, guys, we can just decloak and we can just hide those in the back, okay? But there's another Banshee that could come in. So we're just going to right-click, shift, hold position, okay, with this Banshee. So it's going to go and it's just going to sit over the base where we want it to go, Okay. Now let's get upgrades. Our bases are super saturated right now. Gary and Bruce version 2 over there. And let's try and go for those three more factories, shall we? Looks like that Banshee got shot down. That's okay. We'll try to go in with the other one while they're distracted. And you can do this where you kill two or three probes and you cue them back to the edge. Because we know he has detection. We know he's going to respond, right? Now, we can get a reactor on that so that we can um, swap one of those factories. And let's take our third base and just play our normal game plan. So we need an engineering bay, of course. We're building more tanks, more SCVs. And looks like this never got done. Okay. So we're going to grab a lot of guys. Send them all to the third. And let's move things over, guys. Let's put a tank up there. Maybe just there. And then... This guy can move out there, and everything else can move up as well, with these tanks out in the open. Build more SCVs, build more gases, and then we can get two more tech labs, and we can put that on there. So pull these Hellbats back, got lots of tanks over here. Put guys on gas straight away. Did we get our upgrade started? We did. Gary and Bruce can keep building, and we're just going to queue up more depots for them straight away. And remember, we don't need that starport really for anything. If you want, you can keep building Banshees all game. But otherwise, you just leave them there. And at this point, when your opponent's really ready... Ow! So if we scan, he'll get shot by my tanks at least. 
so he loses the disruptor. If your opponent's trying to outrange you like that, just remember the reason you can't shoot them is vision, okay? So one thing here is we saw he had a cyclone, okay. so we could build a, uh, an observer, so we could build a Thor to help kill the observer, right? We can get plus two attack. And what else can we do, guys? We can get some turrets to see DTs, but we can also get them on the edges. What's that going to do? Once again, guys, we know exactly what that's for. Come on. Just trying to stop those drops getting in. Oh, look at this cheeky bugger. Do we have anything that shoots up? Not really. So we're trying to just run forward here. More Felbats. So our opponent's trying to take advantage of us. And we're just going to... Basically keep moving up here and remember I never move the anchor. These guys, I just move my forward rally. And we're gonna kill that observer finally. More tanks, more aliens. And we're actually uh, maxed on supply, which is cool. So we can grab all my idle workers, control click on the idle worker button, click there. This base is almost full, we just need one guy there. And we should be able to kill my opponent, right? So, what are we going to go? We're going to swap to Hellbat production now, rather than Hellions, just so I don't have to keep morphing them. And we're just going to leave this tank here, and maybe, like, one other tank here. Everything else, we're just going to grab. Let's see, is he still over here? We're just scanning, because it felt like he was in my face for a while there. We're going to just shift box click. That's what I just did, guys. If I'm like, oh, I want to leave these tanks, I don't want to F2. Shift box click. So I just did shift box click. Control 1. Coming through. Control 2 it shows up as, because I use different control groups. And we're going to go for that big push, okay? Now, I'm going to build some more Thors. Why? Because I don't know if he's swapping air or anything like that. What's he building? We're trying to scan. It looks like just Disruptors, Zealots, Stalkers. We're building Thors anyway, because remember, that's just a standard thing if we're worried about air swaps. So we're adding some Thors and some Hellbats. And it's time to go. So where's his third base? Is it over here? It's over on the left. So let's attack. That third doesn't have many workers. So instead, let's push here. We'll isolate the natural and the third at the same time, okay? Once again, what's a nice move we can do if we want some extra macro behind it? Well, we could take a fourth, fifth. I mean, we could even build more command centers there. Let's not focus too much on that. That's, 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 uh, it's nice, but yeah. We've got plus two attack this time around. But still scan ahead of our army. Try and make sure we're not surprised by anything. And ooh. We're just going to scan, siege our whole army here. These guys are going to cloak. And we're going to tell them to move there and hold position. Remember that same hold position micro that we were doing before? Okay, so check this out. This is scary to move in there, guys. So what are we going to do? We're going to use this ledge. So I'm going to control click the tanks. That's going to grab all the unsiege tanks. Ship... Right click, shift siege. So they're all going to go there. And then we can kind of move forward a bit. And we're just going to try and grab these back siege tanks. And we're going to try and move them there. And then these guys can move up here. We're just going to try and inch our way forward little bit by little bit. And grab these doors and hellbats. Move them forward. And he has to engage us. And those tanks did go down. That's why we didn't want to move too many tanks up that ramp. Because we knew they'd be very exposed. Keep building tanks and hellbats. Tanks and hellbats. And we can send those guys in there. And then these tanks and Thors and hellbats can go up this side. I think this guy might be blocking everything. We can try to move these tanks forward. And siege up. And you see the power of tanks and hellbats are super ridiculous. Like, super, super ridiculous. Now... This is a game, and it's kind of funny, guys. So part of the reason, for those who are wondering the context, why did we swap to this build from yesterday's or, or previous session's Hellion Lib mech opening? Number one, we wanted to be safer, right? So we've got the Cyclone, the tank, and the bunker. Like, such a defensive setup. But it, this was also partly prompted by my lovely moderator, Bulia, who I kept running in and killing their whole economy with Hellions and the Liberator. And he was like, is this really the best practice? Because look, you're doing so much damage. There's no resistance. There's nothing for you to react to because your Hellions and Libs are just too consistently killing the workers. And I'm like, that's true. I'm like, how do I avoid that? And I was like, well, you know what? Maybe this will be just e an easier opening because it's easier to defend all ends and cheese, right? Because we're naturally safer. We're naturally very safe with this build, number one. And I was like, well, number two, 
the harassment will hit a bit later, which means there's going to be more chance of them having defense up, more chance for me to show you guys how to micro it, when to commit, when to pull out. Now, my opponent very unfortunately here had literally zero information, so they scouted earlier with something. I, I don't, I think it was the Adept coming in, and other than that, they didn't build an Observer, they had no spotters on the edge of their base or elsewhere, no map vision, and they just kind of F2'd across the map, so... My Banshees came in, found a completely undefended base, and my opponent, as I said, didn't even have an Observer. Now, if they had an Observer, their correct call would have been grab the Nexus, group their army, recall the Stalkers, the Sentries, the Observer, don't lose too much. But this literally just won the game, these Banshees. And, and obviously, hey, we have a bunker, we have a tank on the high ground, like, this is a very solid defensive setup, especially when they panic, kind of move command in like that. Um, and this was game over, right? So this is what we were trying to avoid. These are not the quickest Banshees. These came in at six minutes, guys. These are far from the quickest Banshees. Banshees can hit way quicker than this. But we see that until you're playing at really high levels, you sometimes, no matter how late your harassment is, will still hit some really nice ones. Why not get two Marines before the tech lab? Because you have some dead time. Um, you, so you could do it. The, 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 the thing that's just a little complicated there is that you need to not build two marines before the factory. So check this out, because if, if you queue up a second marine straight away, I don't think you have enough minerals for the factory. Let's check that, because that was my... Yeah, because notice we've already got 100 gas, we don't have enough minerals. So it would just make the build a bit more complicated, I felt. Balgon and um, two marines still isn't... I mean, it would help a little against like a, a reaper, but I feel like you can probably get the tech lab and the second marine out in time to fight a reaper off anyway. So I think you'd be fine. It's a good question. It's definitely a good question. Um, if we weren't playing a Protoss, obviously our Marine wouldn't be sitting out here. Because a Zerg or a Terran could kill us. And keep in mind, even me, I pull it back from about 2 minutes 30. Because we know there could be an Adept or a Stalker coming in soon. So we're going to pull it back a little bit. But yeah, if you if you don't build the Marine... Uh, if you build that extra Marine straight away, then the factory's late. And the most important thing is this, this Cyclone getting out. Defends you from most early things. So definitely a, a nice one there. Obviously, like, hey, what if six slings come in? Well, you're just going to have to lift your command center, right? You're going to have to just lift your command center temporarily, get behind your wall, and then beat it back with the cyclone. What if the stalker or the adept comes in early enough and it cancels you, it kills the SAV building command center? Same thing. You're just going to need to build a depot in your main because you're going to be a supply blocked otherwise and wait for the cyclone and then continue building. And we should be okay there. But uh, yeah, these Banshees were not particularly fast, guys. So <laughs> going for a cycle to tank before Banshee production, slowing our starboard down. Not the fastest, but it did a crazy amount. Could we do it after the factory, but before the tech lab? Um, I don't know how long a tech lab builds. I mean, I, I think technically you could totally squeeze that in and it would be fine, crispy bacon. I think, uh, let's check. Yeah, technically you could. You could squeeze another Marine in and then a tech lab. If you, if you want to really optimize the build order. But this is already getting a bit too kind of ultra detailed, I think, for Platinum League, in my opinion. Um, maybe, maybe not. It's up to you. Uh, we, 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 we. My man! I mean, uh, why not? Why not? Okay. All right, we could, we could do that. Pause production. <laughs> Marine after factory starts. So we're going to say second Marine after factories and then swap off and build two more marines okay you know what let's do that just because that will make us just slightly safer in some scenarios it's a good point it's a very good point hey cosmo yeah i mean most game companies aren't constantly claiming their their music because their music is awesome so and they they want people streaming their games and and you know i'm a massive morrowind fan we talk about morrowind in rimworld every day in my chat uh and like elder scrolls because of the the soundtracks that i listen to so <clears throat> hopefully they don't decide to go strike at all we'll see kind of a dangerous move on my part, I guess, if you think about it. All right, guys, we've got another Terran versus Protoss match. So I think people wanted to see Widowmind, and Widowmind's a really good versus Protoss. So why not? Oh, whoops, that guy was meant to go build that depot. It's going to be a few seconds late. So, um, awesome. So let's set up our camera locations. Number two. Now, where do we want to set up base three? There or there? I think we want to set it up back here, just because it's easier to defend. And then we'll take the fourth at the front. Um, 
Just because this base sticks out a little bit and the ledge doesn't really cover it that well, so I think it's a little dangerous to take it straight away. As an Old Wings Liberty player, I just can't get used to using Widow Mines. Now, I don't really advise... That, that's an interesting comment. I think I think it's just going to take you practice more than anything. They're a fantastic unit. Um, they really are, but I, I don't actually like them that much as harassment versus Protoss in the opening stage. And that's because if the player reacts and just spreads their units out, lets a Widow Mine hit each probe, it feels like it doesn't do that much. So it feels inconsistent, and it feels like a player, even if they have almost no fighting units, they can defend it. Now, guys, if you are already taking damage on the SCV when you pull, already pull. Just pull two SCVs so that we don't need to um, lose one. And so that we could pull it off if we needed to. We're putting a Marine, an Orbital. Oh, I forgot to scout. Oh, no, that's not good. All right, let's just go check if my opponent's expanded, because that's all we really care about anyway. This will give us a little bit more minerals in our opening, guys. Right, as we go factory. So, a small little adjustment to the opening that Twitch chat suggested. Let's squeeze one more Marine in before the tech lab. Just have a few more fighting units. Did slow down our SCV there slightly. He's expanded. That's all we needed to know, guys. That's all we needed to know. So, we're going to go get the second gas. Let's rally this guy over to build the depot. I don't think this extra Marine really screws too much up. You just need to remember to start the tech lab right afterwards. And then we have two Marines, so if you do end up fighting an early Zealot, an Adept comes in, a few SCVs plus two Marines can fight off an Adept. You just have to pull those SCVs early to make sure they tank the first hits from it. Okay. And you can see the Tech Lab does still match up, so well caught, Twitch chat. <clears throat> and we want to go straight for that Cyclone, remember. Immediately. Already pressing the key before it even landed. Um... Build more guys there. I want to go starport. Build another marine or two. So this is bad, leaving my marines out front, guys. Let's try and pull the marine back like a pro. Oh, he focus fired it. I'm going to drop a mule in front of him because I'm a Chad gamer, guys. My cyclone's almost out. Oh, he got me cyclone. Well done. Um, you guys want to... Uh, we're going to build a reactor. We don't really need it just yet, but we're going to build it just because it's a good unit. There we go. Okay, cool. And we're going to leave our units in the middle. We'll build a tank as well for safety. And... I think... Do we do we build a tank here? No, nah, let's skip the tank. Yeah, let's skip the tank, I think, is going to be the thing we do. Let's, let's swap over the factory. So the way we want to do a Widow Mine build is we don't want to delay it too long. So... Let's get our medevac out straight away, and um, we do want to get a bunker, because we're skipping the tank, we're going to get that just a, a few seconds early, and then we can swap over here, and we want to go the Widow Mines, okay? So, in general, these builds aren't going to be super refined, because we're showing so many different types of opening harassment off of the same sort of opening. But I think with this one, we've decided, you know what, let's let's do the Widow Mine drop. And we're just going to do a two Widow Mine drop to start, but we're going to follow it up with a, another Widow Mine drop right behind it, okay? So we're going to put Marines on the bunker. We're going to rally to the bunker as well. All right, first Widow Mine drop. So real simple, we're just going to send that to the staging zone on a control group and ready for us to do more with. And we're just going to keep building depots here as well in a little bit. Let's build a third command center. And then the two gases, remember? Same as always. And we're going to queue up more Widow Mines before that next one goes in. So guys, when you come in, you always want to boost on the way in. That can't see us yet because it doesn't. It doesn't it's only got about that much vision. So we don't need to wait to boost until here when we're getting in vision. And we're going to drop plus left click. And then we're going to box the Widow Mines. Tell them to burrow. They're going to fire. And then we're going to box everything. Click them, and we're going to go, and we're going to try and um, let's go. hide over here. Okay? Now let's go home and macro. SCVs, uh, more Widow Mines, and let's now put guys on gas. Let's build more depots. Let's build more tech labs. Um, we're just focusing on our macro. Macro, build two more factories. Um, let's get that armory, let's get that engineering bay, and let's load up this Widow Mine drop, so we can go down there. 
Our opponent has a warp prism. So this way, we see, check this out. We've got a Widowmine drop there and a Widowmine drop there. And we can try to do one and then do the other right afterwards. Now, at this point, we want to just put some Widowmines out of the map. So what am I doing, guys? I've just clicked these Widowmines. Right click, shift burrow. Shift left click. Right click, shift burrow. So they're just spotting Widowmines, okay, guys? Let's get the third orbital, get some more tech labs. And what are we doing now? We're just building Hellions. Uh, we're building some more tech labs and stuff like that for our extra add-ons. And our opponent's going to come and try and kill us, so I think we might die. So we're going to build extra bunker there, an extra bunker there. These guys are going to try and repair that. And we're going to try and make lots of units, marauders, tanks, mines. Okay. So we're going to drop those guys there and these guys here. He's going to have no economy. So remember, all we have to do, guys, is not die. So we're going to try, we've told them to just base unload in the base. Attack. And we're going to try and just unload all of these. And it looks like our opponent is doing a really good job of blinking into our base. And they're going to kill us. So we see the weakness of not building any tanks and just continuing um, to, to basically... Oh. So we're trying to build Widow Mines and tanks. These two are going to rally behind the Widow Mines and that's going to rally there. This tank is the one thing that might be able to save us. We're going to build another bunker there if we need to. This is obviously a really hard situation for us. Now, we could try to move those Widow Mines on top of him, but we're not going to risk it. We'll just try to borrow these Widow Mines here, create a little bit of a safety zone. And we're just going to keep borrowing the Widow Mines as they come out. So, you can see that he's done some really nice damage, has our opponent. And what can we do to defend this? Well, we've lost our barracks, so we can't even build production right now. So I think we're going to lose this one. Well done by my opponent, guys. They have no economy, though. So let's actually just keep that in mind. Let's try and float this command center away. Um, we're going to try to build a tech lab up there. Try to run these SCVs away. We're going to try and lift these buildings back. Okay, if we can just get this tank back and then just keep borrowing all of these mines, maybe, just maybe we can do something. The Widow Mines are doing good damage. I keep scanning in case there's an Observer, in case you guys are wondering. Oh, we don't have any gas, eh? Hey? Or any minerals, actually. So we're going to tell these Command Centers to land so they can drop mules, because we're out of money right now. And we're just trying to split up all of these Widow Mines everywhere to hang on. Now, I've got some Liberators. We're going to try and make more Tech Labs here. And we're going to see if we can... Okay, let's actually... So we're going to drop the Mules and then immediately lift that back in here. Because it's so dangerous to have that out there. And we're trying to build... Thanks for the Bezos We're trying to move all of our defense up. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. So we're going to try and move this tank there. We're moving the lids to try and, and Widow Mines to try and cover it. We're going to grab an SCV, put it on auto repair. Auto repair is alt plus your repair, okay, by the way, for anyone who's wondering how to do that without clicking on it. And we can try to move the libs forward. And just tanks and mines, tanks and mines. We can also borrow a mine in the third base, because that's the big problem, is if my opponent has a third... That's a, that's a problem. We're also going to take a corner base so we can start milling that. Now we're going to put a tank up there. Oh, not many Widow Mines in range, unfortunately. Which is why that's the thing. So we're going to take this back Liberator. And we're going to just shift that forward a little bit. And we're going to put these Widow Mines here. Um, okay. And I think... We're going to hide that Command Center, like I said. So we want to kill those widow mines wherever possible. These widow mines are going to try to come up here. We don't have any tanks, which is the big problem. What's going on? Attention. Uh oh. Let me try and raise that depot wall. Widow Mines will do some good damage. But now we have to fight with uh, SCVs, which always sucks. So we grab our SCVs, try to move the Widow Mines there. We're going to go after this Observer. Okay. 
Now SCVs are losing, unfortunately. Uh, we'll use a siege tank here. Keep dropping mules. Keep rebuilding the SCVs. Because your opponent is so focused on trying to kill you in this scenario. My opponent maybe hasn't rebuilt their economy, right? We don't we don't know what our opponent's economy is like. So we're gonna put widow mines there, widow mines there, and then all the rest are actually gonna focus on the front. And it looks like my opponent's on two base only. So what would be really cool here is if we could queue a liberator in there, and we'll queue the other liberator to go around the top. And that'll come in the back. So we're queuing one in the main, one in the natural. While this is happening, all we're doing is building SCVs. We've got plenty of gas, so stop mining gas. All we're doing is building lots of SCVs, lots of mules. And um, we'll try to move this tank up. And we're going to try and build as many tanks as we can. And I think that'll be a good way of doing it. Yeah, you know what? We can put two guys on these gases. And let's try and just drop all the mules up there. So you can see our Liberator comes in, and it sees Double Forge. Remember, our Widow Mines killed every single SCV before. Now, this took a lot of Siege, Unsiege, Micro, and the main mechanic that I've used here to save my Bacon guys is Unsiege, Shift Siege. With And because I'm on US West, that's actually way slower for me to do it than I normally do. It's still way better than most people watching are going to be able to do, right? Because I've got the Master Memory of move this unit there, move this unit there, because I've played so many games, right? You're not all necessarily going to be able to do that, but... I figure it's it's kind of us showing what to do in the emergency situation. Build order wise though, we should have lost this game, right? In terms of too many Widow Mines and we saw what happens when we don't build those safety tanks early. So I think, what can we kind of learn? Well, we're going to go back through the build order and we're going to go, okay, this little Widow Mine thing I made, it was a bit too much of a commitment to Widow Mines, wasn't it? A little bit too much. Now let's see if we can get the Observer. So we click that Observer and... Oh, it didn't fire in time. Damn. So anyways, we're going to put a tank there, a tank there. We'll try to put a tank up there as well. Keep building tanks. And now that our gas is obviously going to be getting low. Let's start putting guys onto these gases. And yeah. All we're doing is building all that. Let's get an engineering bay. Because right now we're spending every scan trying to recover our economy. Let's put this barracks out front, because right now I can't see over that pillar, which is super dodgy. Um, So right now I'm kind of aware of my main base. So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm sending Widow Mines all over the map to just try and see what's up. And we're also going to put some tanks there and there. We're going to put another factory down. And that's awesome. So we lost our armory. Let's build another one. We have never got our three factories. What am I doing? Why am I building three factories? We're on three. What do we do, guys? We need two more factories. Because that's our full production. One armory, bunch of factories, engineering. These are all the normal things that we want. So even in the chaos, we are going back to something resembling a vaguely normal game, right? A vaguely normal game. Not not very normal. Oh, there's a warp prism out there. Okay. And let's build a command center here. Let's try and, and take this base, actually. Let's take the front base this time, because I also want to be pushing my opponent pretty early. And remember, these Widow Mines were all just queued out there. Okay. So we're going to build Hellions now, because we've already got way too many Widow Mines. Barracks is taking some shots, but that's okay. Just keep it out there. It's a very good spotter unit. Keep building SCVs. We're at 57, which is not too bad. Let's put guys on gas in the corner. Obviously, we're not going to defend that no matter what. It's just there to try and um, surprise our opponent. That's that's its only job is like, let's see if I get away with this. If it dies, it dies. And you still want to do normal expands if you take a hidden base under pressure, just because it makes it your opponent feel more like, oh, this guy needs to expand really hard. Like this, this guy's in a bit of a desperate state, right? So it's nice to do that. So we've got plus one on the way. We've got lots of tanks. Um, I think we will build one Thor because like I said, just having a little bit of anti-air. I've already got quite a few tanks. A little bit of anti-air would be really nice. And I'm going to start to inch these tanks forward. Um, we're going to put some Widow Mines out just all over the map. So once again, that, that shift burrow. And I'm using shift D selecting two mechanics in one. Notice I'm not doing anything, guys. 
and they're moving all over the map in Byron. This is how you use Widow Mines outside of harassment just for map control. Now I'm going to deselect that command center maybe if I don't want to kind of show what I'm up to. Anyway, let's move these tanks forward. Oh, we need to lift that and run it away. I'm going repair command center, right click minerals with the SCVs that I just pulled. So we're getting multiple things done at once, remember. Always, always multiple things at once. And let's try and build a turret out here. We can grab so many of these SCVs, guys. Let's just build one, two, three, four. And let's take like almost that whole mineral line. Send them down there, take these gases. Oh no, so we're gonna hide the command center and these SCVs, we're just gonna bring those all back here. And like I said, we can't really defend that base. I mean, we can try to hide it if we want, but whatever. Let's just try and build some stuff. All right, guys, let's try and uh, think about doing an attack, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to send one Hellion. We're going to use our dumping key to see if his army moves south. If it doesn't, we're going to push through on his side. And tank Hellbat, my rally, lots of tanks, lots of Hellbats. That should be able to defend if he tries to push in here, I think. So, oh, he's going to recall. Interesting. So he's recalling to the third. He probably sees me moving across this map. Well done. Build another command center. Uh, we're going to move forward. Gonna scan, try to get that siege up in a good position. And I think we've done it. Oh my lord. So we did enough damage early that even though I had almost nothing there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sad cheesy brain dead moron. So um let's look at the build order and think about how can you get widow mines off this? Because I for me, the real problem I had was just realizing these Widow Mines are going to be so late. I just feel so awkward, right? But is it really the worst thing in the world? Not really, right, guys? Uh, the whole point we saw in the previous game is the Banshees, they didn't hit at a good time either. It's still good to do harassment. It doesn't have to be a pro game of timing. Um, even in Masters and GM, you can hit... We, we talk about, like, the North American Oracle. is an Oracle that hits a minute after an Oracle is supposed to come out, but it is even more surprising. It does more damage than you expect because of that. It's the North American Oracle, man. So I think in this scenario, um, we still want to build a tank there, right? I still I, th I still think we want to build a tank, um, potentially. It's just with this opening, if we're playing safe, we can't rush a Widow Mine drop. We do it a bit later, and that's totally fine. Build a tank, then swap onto the reactor. Now, if we want to do some harassment before that, we'd probably still open up with a Liberator, I think would be a good way to do it. So we have something to pressure our opponent, see what they're up to, right? Get a Liberator. Um, if you, for some reason, know they're going a quick robo in a warp prism, you could get a Viking out early as well and just use it defensively. That's an option. Or Thanks you could just Bezos make a Viking box. and tell it to land in a mineral line if you want to save on the gas, right? So these are these are all options. So either a Liberator or a Viking for a bit of harassment with the Widow Mine version of the build. And when we swap it over, we start pumping mines and then we do probably just one, maybe two Widow Mine drops. I think one Widow Mine drop is probably enough. Any more than that can get a bit micro-intensive. But if we had a bunker up, you know, a tank and stuff, it would have at least given us just a few more units to get over there and defend. It was always going to be hard with the, the base so exposed like this. And that is why, if we want to clean up this sort of opening, well, we want to say, hey, wait a second. You know what? Second and third factory could go down a bit earlier as well. If we go third command center, double gas, before extra production facilities while harassing, that might be greedy. So let's map this out a little bit. And this all helps our understanding. So... Hey, pig! Attacking with lots of harassment and also going 3cc is super greedy, bro. What the fuck? What if I want to play a safe game rather than this silly tryhard Let's just hope my harass wins the game style. Okay, you've got a good point, imaginary Twitch chat guy. Okay, so, okay, so uh, a branch to be a bit safer, um, especially if going Widow Mine or Hellion after our tank. So why is this, why is it to be a bit safer, not if, 
save for when going widow minor lane after our tank. Okay, so so the problem is we are naturally weaker because only one tank, one cyclone, one bunker. Hellion mine doesn't help too much versus blink in the main, nidus worm, etc. etc. Okay? Okay, so what are we gonna do? Okay, so what we do is this. As we swap our factory over, drop second and third factory, and rush straight to double tech lab production of tanks. Now, what's going to be kind of funny about is if we do that, well, when does our third command center and extra gases go down? And the thing is, you do have extra gas off this sort of opening, right? You do definitely have a little bit of extra gas. Now, if I built a Liberator, that's harder, right? So what we could do is say, look, if we just build one medevac, we don't spend this extra 100 on the other. We've got 230 gas right now. We can drop a factory there, a factory here, build a tech lab there, and get ready to swap those over. But then we're going to need gases to keep up that production, right? Well, not necessarily, because keep in mind, you don't actually spend any... If you're not building more starport units... These don't cost much gas. Well, if you're not building stuff, that doesn't cost gas. You can kind of get away with it, but I think we're still going to add the gases just to give us a bit of a smoother path here. Drop second and third fa factory. Add third and fourth gas. This heavily delays your third CC and build up to your giant push, but it means you're more easily able to defend any counter pushes to your harassment. So if you really like leaning into multiple widow mine drop waves, you know, multiple groups of of, you know, lib mine hellion all these heavy harass units that suck at front at defending, then this is a good option. Note, and now we're getting into just thinking about decision making and how we can develop our build based on how you want to play mech. And that's part of what I wanted to do today because mech is something where it's all about figuring out the style that you most enjoy. Maybe you do play that first style from the start of the mech coaching that we did where it was like straight into Hellions and Libs, dive the mineral lines, get in there. And that's totally like an option you guys can do. It just comes down to what suits your style as a player, right? What, what suits your style? Do you like that and, and hit the, greed, the, the kind of greedy build afterwards and try to just really tighten it up and, and that sort of stuff? Or do you want to play this, this much safer version? Like, I'm harassing, but I'm going straight three factories, staying two base for quite a bit longer to, to be safer behind. Note, if you build a lib or two, you basically need to rush your third and fourth gas even before extra factories. Libs cost a shitload of gas, 150 each. So it's really important if you are building multiple libs and you want to get that second and third factory up, it's just, it's it, you have to get the extra gases, right? As I said, if I built a liberator before, I'm even 50 gas down from this. It's going to be even harder to make that work. So I hope this makes a lot of sense in terms of like how the build could work out and that sort of stuff. Um, and as we said, once you are building extra tanks, it's like you have a tank and a bunker covering the natural and then you just kind of have all your tanks like in range of each other in this kind of never-ending line. So say Stalkers blink into the main, or they night us there and they try to jump on this tank. Well, they're also moving in range of this tank. And then if they're moving in range of that tank, they're also moving in range of this tank and then this tank. So you've got this kind of line. And then if your opponent, oh, they're all in on the natural, guess what? I might grab these two tanks and move them down to join these two tanks that are already on the low ground. If they're all in in the main, we might grab these two tanks and, and shift siege them up here to back up these tanks, okay? So you're, you're giving yourself different ways you can defend. But the point here is we are starting to understand things. And this is the most important thing. So anyone is here who once again wants to find a one-size-fits-all solution for everything, you can't go bronze to GM if you do that. You won't improve. You can find a one-size-fits-all build order that allows you to just sit at your rank and never improve. Sure, even then, there's going to be something that you're weak against that you, don't, you haven't even considered. And the meta is going to shift. And at some point, you're going to start getting wrecked. And you're going to be like, far out. What's more important in StarCraft always than being solid against every single option, it's going to be basically just 
understanding the ins and outs of what you're doing. Do you know what? Everyone's blinking in my main base every game. Holy shit. You know what? I'm literally going to do that single Liberator Harass, nothing else, and we're just going to keep building tanks, and we're going to have like four tanks ready by the time the blink attack comes, and we're going to win the game with it. I do like that in Platinum League, Widow Mine Drops are considered, um, considered cheese as well. Widow Mine Drops and Mech. So, yeah. I mean, this, this ended up being very delayed by my Widow Mine Drops, but obviously when I saw that coming, I kind of realized, I was like, hmm... Not having factories building so late in the game. Only one tank. Like, like, I don't even have a tank out at this time. This is objectively ridiculously bad. The situation I'm in. This is just so... It's 6 minutes 35. This is so slow. Uh, and so we're like, okay, did I really need to drop 6 Widow Mines in my opponent's base and send 2 out on the map for map control? Mm, maybe nah. Maybe, maybe no. Maybe no. Thank you very much, Jimboy, for the five month three sub. Ghost Shade for the Prime Gaming. Creepy, Bearded Poodle, and El Dev Dude Arena. Thank you guys. Really appreciate the love. Um, sorry, guys. We're trying to catch up on the qu questions. For when you um, are scrolling back through chat, it would be good to analyze the replay, reset decision making that helped you not fully die. Yeah, so this was a lot of, like I said, really high level crisis management. We should have had more defense out. You should not find yourself in this situation where you are trying to defend 16 Blink Stalkers with four Marines, a Cyclone, and two Aliens, okay? Let's restate that before we break down this defense. The first thing, guys, is if... <laughs> if you fucking... <laughs> if you are in this situation, you've done something wrong. Keep that in mind. First point of contact. Um, if your opponent chose instead to get four bases instead of try to end the game, would he not have locked the game down? Oh, oh, you mean, you mean like five minutes after this? Like after we kill each other's workers? Yeah. If my opponent held the probe key down and built a few next eye, they would have been fine. But you've got to remember that most players just are really bad at rebuilding their economy. They just really struggle with it. Not to mention, I don't know how long these actual Widow Mines survive. So first of all, let's, let's talk about that and then I'll talk about the defense. So an observer does clean that one up. And then does he, does he clean this one up? He doesn't. So yeah, his main gets denied for quite a while. Um, so his economy was obviously very bad, but yeah, if my opponent just held the probe key down, um, after all of this, cause my opponent did awesome damage, right? They come in with more stalkers. Let's take a look. So I got down to 14 with three orbitals. I got down to 25 in this scenario. Usually I do think because they kept doing good damage as well. The thing is, I think the extra damage stacked up. I think this was all worth it. All these extra waves of harassment from my opponent were amazing. They were really well done. Um, and they were holding the probe key down behind it. Like, this is actually even better than I realized. Definitely, though, they shouldn't be looking for the kill here. They should be looking like, hey, I'm picking off production. This is great. At this point, I would stop warping in stalkers if I was my opponent. And I would be like, okay, this is fine. This is enough. Or I would push harder. I would already be running down here, blinking on that tank, killing it, and winning the game. Because if my opponent ran in and blinked down, that would have been big. Now, what are they missing to do that? An observer. Wait a second, they have two. Why didn't they just click an observer? If they had clicked their observer here, my opponent wins this game. Because they could they would have seen, oh wait a sec, I can just run through. Even if they take these two widow mines, which weren't there before. Even if, if those widow mines are there, two take two or three widow mines, take two or three tank shots, a few lib shots. Once the tank's gone, the libs are useless, the widow mines only fire once, and they win the game. So they could have actually won the game here with better execution. But imagining they do lean out of it. This is the point in the game where, like we said, we could hold down the probe key harder, take a base. Take another Nexus as soon as you have the money. Maybe do that a minute from now in between all the micro actions, you know? And they absolutely could have could have recovered probably faster than me because the Stalkers are still making things very awkward for me. So let's talk about the defense. Thank you, Iandar, for the 43 month three sub. What's up? So in terms of the defense, how did we, how did we handle this? Because this was crazy crisis management, super high level stuff. And a lot of it was deep Mommy. muscle memory where even when I wasn't super fast with my clicking, I was still very fast in my decision of what to do because it was all muscle memory. I've been in these situations before, I'll be there again. So first things that I do here, let's watch from my camera, is I lose my cyclone like an idiot while I'm unloading my widow mines. And I'm like, oh crap. So I'd already tried to get some bunkers up. And what I'm thinking of this as, why was I putting a bunker there? I knew I would not be able to defend everywhere, but I was like, look, if, if you can just get an anchor up around your production, get some widow mines, get some tanks borrowed there, that's going to protect you so you can build more tanks and widow mines and you can eventually defend, right? Tanks are amazing. Problem here is he's on top of my production. So we've got to get widow mines to create these little safety zones. And notice I changed the rally point and I run that tank down and my opponent's not watching. 
So I get the tank down, I siege it, I bring a bunch of SCVs on auto repair, I A move a few SCVs to buy time, and my tank starts killing stalkers. She still at any point here could have blinked down, killed my tank, I would have been dead. But luckily, because I borrowed the Widow Mines, my opponent was panicking a little bit, freaking out a little bit. We were able to kind of like start spreading Widow Mines out around the production. Notice I try to kill this uh, Observer with a scan. And that also saved me for a little bit there. So I knew he could just outrange Widow Mines. So I was like, look, he's shooting Widow Mines. Therefore, I know he has an Observer. Just drop a scan. I didn't even target fire that. It just happened to be in range of the Widow Mine. One of the only units in range. So it got tired. Uh, it got targeted. And it worked out. And from here, all I'm doing is I've got my rally point in the middle of the production. If the stalkers are here, I'll rally there. If the stalkers are here, I'll rally here. If the stalkers are here, I'll rally down here. And this tank isn't even moving down. Because if I lose the tank, I lose the only anchor of my defense. So I'm realizing, look, I've done crazy damage to him. I can lose a command and I can lose 20, 30 SCVs and maybe still survive. Maybe. And basically, I'm just trying to get these units out. Notice I got a tank out of that and a tank out of this before the tech labs died. Oh, that was a hand. There was a Widow Mine that popped out of that. Fuck. So I'm trying to rebuild my tech labs. I should have been dropping mules here, and then I would have been able to keep up tank production. I'm trying to rebuild a barracks, just so I can get more units. And notice my tank's coming forward here, but he goes after it this time. But when he chases into Widow Mines like that, he does take big shots. That tank, though, should have retreated to here. Notice that this tank is not really covered by the other tank very far. So that was a very sloppy tank positioning. We should have ran the tank up here, sieged it maybe there. And then that would have been much better. I keep scanning here because I'm like, are there observers? I'm looking for observers. Ugh. And thankfully for me, he pussies out a few times and loses too many stalkers. It was a mixture of me trying to create a little stronghold of Widow Mine Tank, never trying to unsiege all the units and move them away because that would get them killed, just trying to create a little anchor and oh, reinforce SCVs. that anchor. Oh, that was the attack. entire mindset here. I'm reminded of the Zerg Bronze Gem. If you're not ready to fight, pull back even behind your buildings. Absolutely. And this is what you do with tanks and mech all the time. It's just, just survive, get more tanks up. It's like, remember, even whenever we take a third, like later on in this game, I've got like a tank in my main, a tank here, a tank here, a tank here. And then I start inching my tanks down, right? You never just grab your whole army and move it to the front. The biggest travesty I see with mech players is them just F2ing, unseaging their whole army and then just moving it out and sitting a bunch of unseaged tanks at their third. I'm like, oh god, have some respect. Have some respect for your own fragility. So a good little save there from a terrible situation. How do you retarget mines? Or you just right-click them on things. You don't need to right-click lots, Captain Crenshaw, unless you're trying to stop them from firing completely. But if you just want it to shoot something, you just right select the Widow Mine, click it on something. Um, is the way to do it. So you'll notice there was a point when a Warp Prism flew into my main, and I borrowed three Widow Mines underneath it, and I grabbed the Widow Mines, and I clicked them all onto it. I went click, click, click. I don't know if you need to click more than once. I think you only need to click one time in that case. But basically, because what happens with is with Widow Mines is they will only shoot one Widow Mine to a target, even if it's a big thing like an Ultra or a Warp Prism that doesn't die to one shot. A Warp Prism almost dies. It doesn't quite die to one Widow Mine. It barely survives. And I wanted to make sure that that Prism didn't have time to unsiege and move away. So I was like, I know this is overkill. I only need two Widow Mines, but I don't care. I'm just going to click all three Widow Mines on it to kill it. So there are times like that. You don't have to do that very often. It's just if you want to understand how to do it. Why didn't you put the two libs on the slow zone step to the main? Uh, because they wouldn't be supported there. Volatile Dawn. So we had to keep that production secure. If we go out there, I mean, they could be flying over there. I didn't have any vision. He could just blink on them as they're coming in. Kill them. He's got blink. I could be sieged on the slow zone. He can just blink in the slow zone and just kill them. The Liberators are only going to be super effective there if they've got the Widow Mines and the tanks supporting them. So the question I'd ask you is why would you put them on the slow zone? Because it, it might seem kind of good, but I, 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 in general, that breaks exactly what we just described what we were doing, which is creating a strong defensive anchor in the middle of our production. And as long as that position can't get breached and we can protect just that natural economy and slowly build up that force, we can stretch that anchor out stretch that layer of tanks towards the main and then and then go from there and this is the same reason why i didn't take my third is because i knew i couldn't stretch my units out to defend it that's why i took a corner base all right guys we'll, we'll, we'll do a battle cruiser in this next game <coughs> battle cruiser can be very good or very bad versus terran um it'll be good if they're just building marines it'll be bad if they're building like a few vikings and a raven early and the interference matrix it but it's all right, we can use a scan to, to check we're not going into a terrible situation. and Just keep our eyes open, be ready to teleport out if things are looking rough. Good luck, have fun, beefy. 
So once again, guys, we're going to do the same Cyclone opening here. That should be good. Viking drop. There's a bronze to GM, guys. We're teaching people how to get better, not how to... Not how to do very inefficient styling on your opponent troll Good tactics. Job. It's like, okay, okay guys, we're an intermediate basketball player. Uh, I, I want to get What's better. What should we do? Uh, you need to study the Harlem Globetrotters and do everything they do. If you can't do a backflip slam dunk, then you're not doing it right. I don't think we're going to... That's that's what that's what a Viking drop is. I mean, if you harass with a single Viking, that's fine. But actual Viking drop out of a medevac is the ultimate troll shit. Um, now, keep in mind, this is very gas-heavy battlecruiser. So I actually need to do a bit of thinking. How are we going to get enough gas for this, guys? How are we going to get enough gas for a battlecruiser? Ooh, I don't know. Um, let's send our SCV scout across this map. And then hide that behind their base. SCV ready. How do we get enough gas? I think we might need to get a quick third and fourth gas up. Like, really quick with this one. Orbital plus marine straight away. Now, we're going to take the front third, I think. And then we'll take this fourth and this fifth. No worries. Vikings are good, though. Vikings are very fun. So I have a feeling you, you, you like Vikings, Mr. Viking Raider. You may be biased. So what do we see? This is a one base opening, guys. So we're gonna go factory there. SCV. And let's hide. Oh shit. Oh, we should have already hidden. Ah well. Anyways, we're building another marine here. Uh, get the second gas. And two marines will help us beat off the Reaper, which is good. So this two marine before tech lab adjustment is actually really nice in this matchup. What's going on? We can grab the worker, by the way, at this point, guys. Click it on the inside. Gather, shift, click. Okay. Tech lab's on the way. A little slow, but that's all right. So we've got these guys on number one. He could jump in the main or the natural, so we leave them in the middle. Okay. And you'll see, it times out, okay? Even a few seconds late on the tech lab. Whoops. And there we go. Cyclone on the way. Awesome. And we want to go starport. Remember, we're trying to go battle cruiser. So, like I said, for a battle cruiser opening, we're going to need gases really early if we also want the safety of tanks and so on, which we do. So, um, yeah, I think we can use this tech lab for it at least. That's a thing. But let's try and take a gas immediately. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to squeeze a third gas in for this build order, and hopefully that kind of ties things together nicely. So you need to go for the fusion core as soon as the starport's done. So we need 150 gas. We won't quite have that straight away, but it'll be there soon. That's okay. Okay, my opponent's coming in. So they get a mule. We try and run that mule away. Oh! My opponent really wants to kill it. I did some try-hard micro there. Oh, we didn't quite get it. Piece of shit. Anyways, um, sorry guys, I couldn't resist. I was like, how dare you go back for that mule? I had to, I had to do a bit of micro to punish him there. Um, it, I, I would have been just too upset otherwise. I was like, no, 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 how dare you, you know? I was, uh, all right. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to do a TVT trick, which is put the cyclone on patrol in the main, number two. And it's, the tank can, of course, guard this base. Put another depot down. Fusion core's on the way. We need 300 gas when that fusion core is ready. So we should have that ready. Um, let's get a uh, tech lab on the factory and a reactor. So I think we've got plenty of gas here. Keep building SCVs. And we're basically just, um, yeah, defending with this minimal units. We can build a bunker at the front for the Marines, which we hadn't built yet. I forgot about that as we kind of calculate this build. And the thing is, I can say battle cruise it. Very important that starts. We started 436 this game. I think that's a very good timing. Um, I think that's completely SCB awesome. Ready. And now we can go back into tank production. We've got a reactor on the barracks, which is awesome. And um, we want to go third CC, sec third and fourth gas. We've already got the third. Complete. But we want to go back to like the real normal game plan now. So let's go for it. Third CC. Oh, I'm queuing up some more SCVs because we're a little low on that. What's going on? Fourth SCB gas. Ready. So you can see, okay, cool. We're getting into like a really standard game plan here. He doesn't see the fusion core. You see the yellow line? So he doesn't know that this, he probably thinks this is a raven, my opponent. That's very good for me. Let's put guys on gas straight away. 
Let's build another depot and even one more and then queue them back. And let's put the barracks out over here. So the barracks is going to spot for drops, My guys. Man. And what are we doing? Extra factories. Will do. Now, we're just going to build one battle cruiser, guys. Just one. And we're going to try and use it really efficiently, okay? So we're going to put this on our hotkey. We're going to fly that straight in towards our opponent's main base, okay? And what are we going to use this for? We're going to build more add-ons with the starport while we wait, okay? So now we've got three factories. What do we do? Armory. And then three more factories. One in the tech lab. One ready to go on the reactor. And one up there. We'll go on another tech lab. And remember, our battle cruiser, we don't want to send that in straight away, right? We're going to just put that in the staging point so that we're actually watching it when it goes in. And what are we doing? We're going to put a tank in the main in case we get dropped. Let's get an orbital. And we're adding all of these factories to our hotkey. We're building an engineering bay. Time to go in with the battle cruiser. Okay. So the battle cruiser. It's very important that we don't just fly into four missile turrets. I told you guys earlier about not just building missile turrets for no reason. So notice I'm clicking on that Viking and we're trying to fly on top of the Viking. But there's a cyclone and marines here. So we're not going to get any damage. So we're just going to teleport home. And there was another turret in the mineral line. So my opponent is playing a really inefficient style. Now you might be like, well, we did no damage. That wasn't worth it. Only because my opponent did such a bad build order. Now you might be like, well, so it's not worth it if my opponent does a bad build. No, no, no. This is great. This is fantastic. Guys, this battle cruiser just chills at home. When tactical jump's almost ready, we go along the edge. This time on the right side, where hopefully there's no turrets. And we keep doing this. We just keep keep harassing. All we're doing is building tanks and hellions behind it. And complete. why did they have three turrets this early? Because my opponent is paranoid. I've told you guys, so many people out there on the ladder be doing this sort of stuff, and it's really inefficient. So now, all I need to focus on is taking my bases. We're going to move these tanks out. We're going to build a reactor down here. We're going to... Oh. Third command center is just going to be used as a spotter for now. So look at this. This is kind of hard to fight, guys. Um, oh, look at this. He's, he's bringing more guys down and everything. Right, so we're going to try and inch forward here. Now, he doesn't actually have vision, you're going to notice. So we can just basically move our tanks in range. And then we can use our battle cruiser to swap. All we're doing is building tanks, building hellions, building tanks, building hellions. We'll make plus one weapons for our vehicles. And he's going to come on us and... Oh, we're going to te teleport out of there. So we use that as fantastic bait. And now we've done it. So what do we do? We're just shift-clicking the tanks down. Shift-clicking the tanks down. Take the gases. Take the gases. Gary and Bruce drop a supply drop to make sure. What if he drops us? That could be a problem. So we're going to build turret, 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 turret. And then go back to mining. Turret. Turret, turret, repair, back to mining, rally everything to the base. And my battle cruiser, by the way, has done an amazing job, right? And then we can go tanks here. Um, what if we want vision? Let's send a Hellion out. So we're doing the shift click with the Hellions to put Hellion spotters on watchtowers and everywhere. And then we can put this out, keep building our CVs. Let's put guys on gas. Gary and Bruce need to non-stop. Cyclone can come to the front. We don't really need that there anymore. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of going. Tack jumps, almost ready. So we're going to send this battle cruiser around the top side of the map. We don't know if my opponent has a third yet, so we're just kind of scanning, taking a look. And it looks like lots of Vikings and Cyclone. So my opponent's... I built one battle cruiser, which was always the plan. And my opponent is freaked out as if they're playing against like a hundred battle cruisers. They're basically only building things that shoot up. Which means my big plus one tank hellbat push is just going to be devastating. I don't know how my opponent's going to stop it. And look at all my map vision now. We've got turrets there. We've got turrets there. We're not going to bother with any sensor towers. They can be really good in, in a lot of situations, but... They're kind of the cherry on top of the cake. They're never the highest priority. Grab some extra workers out of our main. Um, I'm going to build some Thors, guys. Okay, we're building more Hellbats. Um, so I'm queuing up some Thors. I don't have a lot of money, so I just queued one. Wait for 300 minerals, queue up one more. Just so we have some anti-air. Plus one weapons just kicked in. So let's start plus two. And you know what, guys? It's time. We're going to leave that tank there. Just whatever I can grab here. I control click the tanks. We'll leave this tank. We'll leave some of the other stuff, and it looks like my opponent wants to uh, actually push into me. 
So we're just going to kind of spread some units out here. Mineral field depleted. And his army is so much smaller than mine, we can A-move him. So this is where we channel our inner four GG, guys. Okay, so we're going to run forward. Our battle cruiser is going to queue into the back of this mineral line. So in case there's turrets there, he's going to run around and then just in over the mineral line in the rally point. And we are just going to shove. Now, at home, we're going to put our rally point there in case he drops our main. Lots of tanks, lots of Hellions. And notice, he doesn't seem to have any units. So I think we can just kind of aim move forward here. And we can get on top of his production. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. I wasn't expecting that. So this Hellbat's there. The other Hellbat's there. And the BC came in the top and cleared out this tank on the high ground. But even if we didn't, even if we just sieged on that base, that would have been fine. Because his army was up there, we thought he would be counterattacking. Our plan was, these guys are just going to defend the natural. If he drops in the main, we're close enough to move up there. We've still got turrets and a tank, so it would be very expensive. We're just building more tanks, more hellbats. And it's okay to be a little sloppy on the offense there, because I was so close to max that losing units actually was freeing up supply to let me get more defense out. And keeping your production alive is the most important part in a Terran-based trade. Pig was supposed to destroy the turret builders, not join them. When did I build my turrets, though? Look at when I built my turrets, mate. Timing. Timing, friends. So my opponent built their turrets. Four minutes into the game. Look at this. Super fast engineering bay. And they're building turrets on the edge. At like, what, five minutes or something? 5.30? It's insane. To be building multiple turrets this early is just so expensive, guys. It's crazy. Four turrets before third command center. Those four missile turrets, that's a command center, not to mention four SCVs build time. My third command center is done. My gases are done. I'm on the way to full three base production. Six factories, a starport, an armory, three bases plus gases. I've got everything set up when I add when I add the turrets. And as much as I know I know you are memeing Tatata. But this is exactly it, right? This is when you add turrets is when they're not slowing down you getting all your fundamental shit, right? I got mine at like 11 minutes, 10 minutes, I don't know, really late. It was after I held this push. And once again, guys, remember when a push comes, don't run into it. That's what's the big lesson we learned with this push? I was moving out to take my push to take my third, but I didn't move out with everything. We just inch our tanks out. That's what we do in every matchup. Doesn't matter if we know it he's pushing or not. He kills a few SCVs that are rallied out and a gas. And other than that, we just inch our tanks forward. Now, this was a bit of a greedy move where I took advantage of my opponent. I moved these tanks forward in range of his tanks because I saw that his air units were up here, so he wasn't spotting this side. So it's a bit of a gamble. If his Vikings and Raven flew down here, his tank would have got a few shots off. But because it was still two versus one, it might have been okay for me. I might have still won the trade just because two versus one. But notice he doesn't have vision of my tanks. And then he just gets baited by the battle cruiser super hard. So the battle cruiser shakes its big booty. The marines all get blasted. The battle cruiser survives. At no point did we unsiege this tank or the tank in the main either, which we'd already just shuffled over to the edge. Those tanks were still there. This tank never moved. It was only the new tanks and aliens coming out that we used to very slowly establish the third base. So just be really, really careful. Yeah. Um, opponent panicked thinking it was it was uh, mass BC as well. But uh, yeah, check it out. So the opponent was going triple starport reactor, all this sort of stuff without really confirming what I was up to yet. And that's why adding a few Vikings, the thing is my opponent was so far beyond well defended, they actually didn't need to react to anything. So my opponent did the classic react really hard to something that you've already beaten, right? My opponent, just by having six Vikings out as part of a standard addition to a Raven, they just win. What time should you be maxed on upgrades, says Rocks and Stuff? Uh, you never should just be sitting around making upgrades and doing nothing else. So it all should come down to the context of what's happened in the game. And I don't think it's useful to ever really benchmark, oh, when should I be at 3-3? Because it really depends on how the game's gone. Have you done a super economic build where you've rushed two engineering bays really early or two armories? And in my build, I'm only going one armory, right? So we literally are like never hitting 3-3 three, because three, we're trying to kill our opponent off three base with a big mech push. And it's going really well so far. But um, it's kind of hard to just give people a generic benchmark of like, oh, 12 minutes, you should be on 3-3. Three, three. 
Because it's like, only if you're in a very passive game, your opponent's passive, you're passive, you're both macroing, you've rushed double upgrades, then you could come up with a timing. But I think what's more important than coming up with some like benchmark of what you should have, because everyone plays at a different skill level. And the thing is, if, you, if you're just there comparing yourself to a perfect pro gamer and you're in Platinum League, it's, it's not a realistic comparison. The better comparison is compare your upgrades and the speed you get them at to where you, where you got it yesterday, right? By the way, are we still only down here? Are we going to take a year to get out of Platinum? What? Is this bar correct, guys? I've been winning every game. How am I... How am I only there? Oh, I'm actually in Platinum 1 MMR. Okay, I thought so. I'm actually in Platinum 1. So if I look at my profile, it's just because I'm still in Provisional, it's taking me a little while to level me up. Okay, I'm actually in Platinum 1 MMR range. It's just going to take a little while to give me the promo. Fair enough. Apparently, we can't get promoted right now. So guys, we've officially hit Platinum 1, and I've just found out that the ladder's locked for the last week. So we'll keep an eye on that and see when we actually hit. We won't get the promo, promo screens. Obviously, we'll get all the promo screens next week when we're doing it, but that's fair enough. That makes sense. Anyways, guys, um, I'm going to hop out to the bigger Twitch chat screen every now and then in between games to like answer questions a little bit. But um, please repost questions as we go. I really rely on you guys asking questions, uh, dumb questions, stupid questions, big brain questions, telling me where I'm wrong. I'm going to rely on all of this from all of you. And of course, guys, remember, we are actually in Platinum 1 now, even though we haven't got the promo screen because of the season lock. Um, was that a Zerg player, guys? Oh my god, it's a Zerg! We don't get many of those at the moment, I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> I just won the Battle Royale because I'm a Chad, heck yeah. Alright guys, um, can you all let me know please everybody, what harassment unit do you want to see this game? Because we're trying to just show how this mech build order can be kind of pretty smoothly blended with any sort of uh, early harassment unit, but like I said, Hellions, Widow Mines, Banshees, Battle Cruisers, guys, not... Bloody. Oh, what a C! Ghosts! Sorry, guys, ghosts aren't a harassment unit. Ghosts are a, a late game spellcaster. <laughs> um. Uh, Raven! Okay, so Raven is an interesting idea. That's an interesting. You know what? Raven's actually not a bad harassment unit, guys. We could do Raven, but it's very gas heavy. Um. So it'd be kind of hard to get a Raven or two out. Like it's it's one of the lowest impact uh, harassments, and if if you really need to micro it to make it worthwhile, so we could try Raven. We could try Raven for sure. Okay. So we'll get two Ravens out for harassment. They won't be particularly early, and we need to select the turret every time we drop it and shift click it on drones. If we don't do that, it's a complete waste of time. Okay, guys. It might work, it might pay off sometimes, but usually it won't if we don't do that micro. Ah, Guys, I cast me. I cast Ruff every... I have a show dedicated to Ruff. There's people in chat who are like, the Ruff on? does... The Guys, this is a show where we're meant to be trying to improve at the game. Are you guys serious? Yeah. Does people know what they're watching right now? Command Half of our chat doesn't seem to know what show... We're what, Bronze GM? We're meant to be teaching people solid ways of improving. Big job, huh? <laughs> you crazy kids. Um, I'm gonna build another SCV. Let's get the deeper. Uh, we're only going to go one Marine into the tech lab this time. Now remember, we're still doing the Cyclone opening. Uh, this is the matchup where it's kind of weak. Um, because Zerglings do not really care about Cyclones. So if my opponent does some sort of Ling Flood or something, that could be a problem. I also forgot to SCV scout. So let's just do a little SCV scout now and just identify with that if anything really scary is coming my way. And um, I think that'll be really nice to kind of check what's up. All right, so we can go Marine plus Cyclone, keep them on the high ground for now in case Zerglings run in, like I said. And we'll get that Starport going because we can go for the Bad Raven. It's going to be a Cyclone into a... Um, let's get the Orbital going. Into two Ravens to drop auto turrets, and then we're just going to play real standard mech. And like I said, the whole point is that Terran is a very plug-and-play race. Let's get the bunker up a little bit early this game. Maybe not too early, though. So that we see there's a natural, and we see a drone going out. That means my opponent's going for a third base. So that's good. It tells us everything is, like, reasonably normal, right? 
command center upgrade. Okay, so we're going to get a bunker a little bit early, just, just to be completely safe here. We can rally to the natural. And once again, guys, we're going to need that third gas. If we want to go Raven or uh, BC, we need the third gas as soon as our natural's up. So we could have dropped that a little bit earlier. So we're going to go for a um, Raven out of the tank so we can swap that over. Get this up. Oh, look, there's an overlord there, guys. So let's go kill that. Cyclone's very good for that. We can put our tank on the high ground. Factory can go there. Stop. Oh, sorry. Wrong building. Starport can go there. Factory can go there. Let's put these guys on gas. Raven goes down. We can build a reactor there. And we can build a tech lab here. And then we can swap these two around and get some Hellion production, potentially. And we can also get a third command center over here. So we're going to put the bunkers there, the marines in the bunker, the cyclone there. And guys, with the ravens, where, where do we want to harass? I think we'll rally down here, the first raven, and we'll harass the main. Then we'll rally up here and harass the back of the third, maybe the back of the naturals. Let's queue up another raven straight away. Uh, these guys apparently weren't rallied to the patch because I'm really good at Starcraft. Fourth gas after third CC, same as always. We want Hellions. Why do we want Hellions, guys? Because you always want Hellions versus Zerg. Because Zerglings are good units, right? So we can start building Hellions. And now, guess what? We've got 200 gas. What does 200 gas allow us to do? Build these two factories. So one can take this tech lab once the Raven's done. And the other one builds on the other tech lab. Saves us having to do as many liftoffs. If we do that ahead of time, it makes your build orders so much more efficient as a Terran player. It's really nice. We've got an extra depot up there. So we don't need that. All right, guys, so let's do our first Raven harass. Let's not dilly-dally. Uh, we're getting Armory while we're going for this. And let's go for it. So what are we going to do? Auto turret there and queue it back. And then we want to select this. We want to shift click on drones. And if those drones run away, then we might need to click on the guys coming out of the gas geyser. Why the ones coming out of the gas geyser? Because the ones going into it, the problem with those guys... Let's grab this raven and go to the other side. Is is they're going to hide inside the gas. The ones popping out of the gas are going to have the longest time before they do that. So it just is naturally going to be like way safer for you. Now we also saw a pretty quick lair. So let's drop a quick scan here. Because we wanted to just see if there's any sneaky tech. Like I was like, oh, that's a pretty fast lair. And we see a spire going down. So that's pretty useful. So we can build an engineering bay a little ahead of time. Now we're still not going to worry about the anti-air. We've got a while. And we're gonna build those three more factories, get the weapons upgrade. We're still just macroing on up like a beast, right? Fourth base, fifth base. So let's lower our wall, let's grab these guys, take the gases, and we're gonna try and secure these bases. Now, remember what shoots up Thor's. So we've already got a few tanks here. We're gonna put one tank there, and we're gonna try and build two Thor's here. Add on. So we just needed the 200 gas, and then we do that. And do we wall off at the front? Yep, you always wall off with mech, guys. Always. Because mech always has the range advantage. Again, Zerg. And we'll build a few extra depots up here, just because we're a little slow on that. All right, let's do another auto turret us. Now, we've got two auto turrets this time, so let's just drop them both. Oh, wait, there's no drones there. Okay, so we can go auto turret, auto turret, and then queue that raven out of there, okay? And just stare at it. I'm queuing up SCVs, building tanks and hellions. We're going to control click. And we're going to try and shift click these drones. Complete. And I'm just shift clicking them again because I thought the drones pulled out of range. And we're going to do this one as well. Okay. This so once again, control click them, shift click the drones. Alright. Now I didn't build turrets yet, guys. So we're going to build lots of turrets. We've already seen the muters coming out. So this is me being way too greedy. So we're going to rally that Thor there. These guys down the front. Oh my god, the Hellions. <laughs> oh, my opponent accidentally attacked a gas. Big mistake for them. Oh my lord. So anyways, my Raven can just basically throw an auto turret and then run home. And all I'm doing, guys, is building Thors and Widow Mines right now, okay? Now, because we just took a lot of depot losses, we're going to build some more there. And here. 
I'm going. We're going to build that plus two still. Now, this Thor is just going to stay in the main all day. With the missile turret, that should keep me pretty safe. And we're going to make Hellbats. We're going to re-roll our natural base. Now, if you're like, oh man, all these guys took damage, we can go repair, shift click, back to the minerals. Now, Widow Mines really help keep you safe in case your opponent masses muters. I like to spread a few Widow Mines around. And like I said, all we want to build, Thors, Widow Mines. So why do we want to build Thors and Widow Mines, guys? Very simple. They beat muters. Now, we've actually built that turret in a really bad spot. We panic put that down, so we're going to kill that. It's actually trapping uh, an SCV, guys. So we couldn't mine from a mineral patch because of that. Awesome. So we always want to leave a few tanks around. Those tanks are never going to leave. Now we've got some Thors out, though. And we're kind of spread out some Widow Mines around the map and at our turrets. Let's go back into tanks, Hellbats, and Thors. And it's a mix of all three for the rest of this game, okay? Let's also try and scan my opponent's army. So where's their army? Normally it's like out front their base somewhere. Complete. Well, we see a Hydra den. So, okay, he's going Hydras, which tells us even more so. We really want to make sure lots of tanks, okay? Because they're not going to be building muters if they're building that. So we've got lots more tanks queuing up, lots more Hellbats. And, yeah. Maybe only leave two tanks at home. Also, we're going to take our Thors. So I'm control clicking these Thors. And I'm bringing this guy down. And we're putting them all on high impact payload. Because if my opponent's not messing muters anymore they're not going to have too much they can do against it now they've got a lot of creep spread so we're saving all of our scans for that but guess what guys we've got the raven so that raven we're just going to right click on a thor so we aren't going to need to scan which is awesome and we'll build a fourth base and a fifth base which is kind of cool as well we'll queue up an armor upgrade and all we're doing lots of tanks and lots of hellbacks hellbats here like I said, we'll leave a few of them at home, but let's push forward towards our opponent's third base and see what we can do. So the trick here is making sure we don't get caught by uh, the opponent's army. I still don't know what their army looks like, so we're just scanning everywhere. I saw some roaches, but I don't see many units. So we're going to rally out here to reinforce this army. And it's Lings and Banes. Okay. So we're going to stop here, guys. It's a lot of Banelings that could be very effective. And we're going to start leapfrogging those siege tanks just a few at a time and just keep moving these guys forward just a little bit by little bit, okay? And you can see here, the Thors, even in single fire mode, they do kill these muters pretty quickly. And because even if I was looking at home to macro, my army's just way bigger than my opponent. So this actually worked out really well. Now, there's an argument, I think, especially if you're dropping double auto turrets at once, that you don't need to... We can move all these tanks forward at once because there's no army now, so we can kind of just thrust. We can go, you know, a little bit greedier. Like, these tanks probably don't even need to go like that. We can just go there and just get in between the rallies. We could spam auto turrets if we want. And we could just kind of spread Hellbats into the bases. Uh, bit of lag there, sorry about that guys. Um, so, opponent's trying to come out, trying to break out of this. I'm going to build some more Thors, just in case there's a muter swap. It's a common desperation move, and as your units try to spread out, every now and then just box them and pull them back, and move the tanks forward. Let your tanks be the unit that seals the victory here. GG, well played. Oh, you played good, dude. Um, so the Ravens did some really good damage, but we, we saw opponent had great creep spread, but maybe over-focused on that because they didn't have much of an army when the push came. I mean, this is Beckett, but we can see that the opponent was only at 56 drones, whereas we were up at 69, and they were just starting all their important upgrades. So it looks like our opponent never really built a solid economy early on. And um, I guess they just, they, were, they, they went really quick four bases, but they were actually playing what was almost a two base muter style. So our opponent here just was kind of very committed to the Lingbane muter attack. And it kind of ended up being an all in, but they also panicked with it. So I think what we saw here is the weakness of my opponent was just that they were focusing on too many different things. So if you're doing a two base muter build guys, um, <clears throat> Let's go back before the auto turrets came in too much 
Um, you don't need a third and fourth hatchery, and you should just focus on your muters being earlier. But if you're focusing on a Ling Bane bust, you should just focus on your Lings. If you're doing those, there's no need to build seven or eight queens and spread creep like crazy, because you're going to be so aggressive. Creep is more of a defensive tool rather than an aggressive tool, guys. So it's really important. So my opponent here was doing quick four base and lots of queens and lots of creep, which are all defensive maneuvers, but they also focused on a very quick spire and lair and bane speed and gases which are very fast tech and therefore they have to be using that tech aggressively so what you've got is your opponents going in two opposite directions and what do we know about starcraft it's always better to have one cohesive direction even if it's not the best strategy because at least then you're doing that thing efficiently what a lot of players end up with in starcraft is they're basically fighting themselves because it's like he's doing all the things that set him up for a macro game so well except building the drones and instead he's rushing his tech and going for an attack but he's committed so much to the queens and the hatcheries he doesn't have that much army for the attack so this is a really common mistake the opponent makes where i have a cohesive direction right i'm building two harassment units the two ravens and other than that i'm just getting three bases and making tanks and hellbats tanks and hellbats thors and widow mines when he makes muters so that's it and, and how many thors what's a good number guys if they keep massing muters there's no such thing as too many thors probably as you get a lot of Thors, I would say in general, once you have, say, five Thors out, any more than that, you want to put most of them in single fire mode, and you actually only want to have one or two in splash damage mode. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. When the fights actually happen, if your opponent's really good at keeping their muters spread out, which is called magic boxing, you can Google magic box micro Starcraft, lots of videos explaining it from me and other people. Um, the splash damage just doesn't do much and they're just better in single fire mode so if your opponent has good muta micro single fire is better for the thors but if your opponent doesn't have good micro and lets them clump up the splash damage is going to be more devastating so it's one of these things where it's like well if your opponent screws up splash damage is better but otherwise you just want one or two thors in splash damage to force them to be spread out and then you let your single fire thaws and the gigantic area on widow mine splash is what really kills them so just always having a few widow mines through your army it's going to make a really big difference guys scan timing on the spire yeah well that was my super game knowledge coming in guys where i was like huh because when i first came in i was like how come your lair is finished so early right and then if i actually went in with this raven for the first auto turret and i saw wait a second there's Oh, this is actually earlier. Like, if I went in when that second raven first arrived there, that also would have told me something was up. So how did I know there was muters, guys? Very quick lair. When I came in here at about 520, lair was finished. That seemed too early. Number two, if I came in here with this raven straight away, which I didn't because I was busy macroing, I would have seen no drones and said, what are you doing, buddy? And I was scanning to try and see any tech, see what his army is, that sort of thing. And we saw it. Even if we didn't see it, though, by the time those muters hit us, we would have had so much production and the like that even if we just had tank hellion we could have grabbed all of our tank hellion if he goes after our scbs and we just literally would have unseaged and a moved across the map and said you sure you want to get in a base trade like this buddy while building thors and widow mines um that is though why it's important for you to try and figure out so if you don't see any roaches by a certain point um against a zerg if they're going zerglings and banelings if it feels like they're playing muters so fast layer too many gases not droning their third that quickly all signs then you can go for the defense earlier some players who really like everything to be automatic they'll just say you know what once i've got my six factories up i go engineering bay as soon as those factories start building and then i just build a turret in each mineral line so at least i've got the beginnings of a defense and some people like to just build that blind turret i like to do it reactively but for you guys like i said once you start your six factories your armory is already going drop an engineering bay if you haven't already got it put a turret in each mineral line I delayed mine a long time and i was actually greedy to the point where those muters probably could have flown into my base and caused me trouble right guys and that was because i saw the spire starting and i knew that a spire takes a minute and 40 seconds to build it is one of the longest tech structures it takes ever to build so i knew i had a couple of minutes to just chill the worst thing you can do is spot a spire just go down panic build an engineering bay and then build 10 turrets straight away and there's another minute minute and a half before the muters arrive all right, guys, we got Diet Gasoline, a Protoss player, as our next opponent. Um, let me know what harassment unit you guys would like to see in the chat. Uh, more Widow Mines, Battle Cruisers, Banshees, um, or the like. We're trying to show that there are so many different ways you can play Good mech with job. the harassment. The follow-up and heading towards that push, though, it's one set piece that plugs into whatever that opening adjustment is. Swaino does equal dream. 
That's right, I'm learning Spanish, guys, all through StarCraft maps. Hey, Wolfen. I'm struggling with my nerves when I play against real players. Very common, very common, mate. Ladder anxiety, people got, people often call that. I have a, um, I don't have any issues with this in any other game. When I'm playing StarCraft, I get so stressed and nervous over doing stuff wrong. Any tips or ideas how to tackle this? Um, Maynard has a really good video on it, exclamation mark anxiety. I've talked about it a lot myself um, over the years. And the thing is, it's 1v1 competition. So a lot of your ego is on the line, right guys? A lot of your ego is on the line and it's hard to avoid feeling that pressure. Um, especially if you've never played 1v1 competition. I remember I never had that really with like team sports. Like yeah, I'd get excited and amped up, but I remember playing tennis as a kid. And even that, just, just the 1v1 aspect, I, I was like, oh, this is a little bit different. Just you being in this directly oppositional situation with someone and one of you wins and one of you loses. It's, it's really, it's interesting, isn't it? Um, a lot of people wanted to see Widow Mines, Hellions, or Banshees. So I think we might try and do the Widow Mine build again since we botched it so much the earlier game. So we're going to do Widow Mines again this time, guys. But we're going to try and do that quick uh, three factory before Command Center. Follow up to try and be a bit safer behind it if we, if we can. Go ahead. Okay, so my opponent's on one base, guys. So we're just going to hide back here for now. Uh, pull off. I don't want to actually pull off gas. I just wanted to get an SCV over there quickly. Command center upgrade okay. complete. So, because my opponent's on one base, we're getting higher level. We're getting to the point where if you were be really being a sicko right now, guys, you would actually um I see I mean a sicko like a good player. And we'll talk more about ladder anxiety after this. Please bring it up again after this game, guys. I'll talk about it more. I mean it's it's honestly it's just you need to just have a good think through about there's actually nothing on the line. And just get in the mindset of looking at the a thousand things you're doing wrong in the game. And, and you'll realize that you have goals outside of winning or losing. If you have those goals, you should be good. Uh, okay, so for now, guys, um, like I said, we, we would probably want to send an SCV scouting if we were really playing super safe here, just to check we're not being proxy. So we're just going to scout around my base with an SCV. We're going to get that cyclone started. Now, we are going to try and do the Widow Mine build, but remember, this is still off our exceptionally safe opening. Two Stalkers are here. Very scary, that. Try and run him out, get the Starport going. And it's all right. The Command Center finished, so we're feeling okay about this, guys. Just make sure our Rally Points are on the inside. We don't want any units popping out there. Okay, let's try and grab these guys and repair if needed. Okay. Awesome. So you see there, we get some kills. Awesome. So we build a tank now. Looks like he killed my SCV that was out there, which is a bit of a bummer. Let's try and get this bunker up. So we're trying to build SCVs right now, guys. Let's build that reactor so we can swap over. We're just seeing if we can catch the Stalker, but this is very dangerous. So pull back, pull back. Okay. And we wanted to go a landed Viking, is what we said last time. If we could get like one Viking out to harass, that'll be like a very cheap way of scouting and just kind of harassing our opponent. So that's like a cool little thing that we'll just add in here. And then we can um, get our swap going. And we're gonna put the Cyclone up there. So now we've got the bunker covering the natural. We can build a tank there as well. And we can swap this over and we can get ready for our Widow Mine drop. Add on complete. Cool. So we're gonna go Medivac plus Widow Mines coming in. But remember, what do we say, guys? The more important thing is actually to get these two factories started. And that's so that we can actually survive, okay? So just making sure we're completely safe. This is like the most campy, defensive, careful Widow Mine drop ever. Because we're trying to get that three factory transition up. I wrote this as a possible way of playing it. It's my first time testing it. So this is kind of experimental. So you guys are getting to watch me Kind of figure out, is this actually a good way to mix it up or no? So we're just going to tell that Viking to go land in between the minerals and the gas there, where he can't really get surrounded by probes. And we're going to get an idea of kind of like, hey, what's my opponent doing in terms of tech? Oh, he's got a shield battery. That's not good. So we're just going to fly out of there and we're just going to hide in the back because we can't damage a shield battery. There's no way we're going to kill that. 
Okay, so what do we also need, guys? We needed those two gases, which we haven't got yet. And that's why the second and third factory actually doesn't make sense. Oh no. My idea was bad, guys. Because I can't, I mean, I can build a tank right now. I can build some Hellions. I don't have enough gas. Unless I, I guess if I took these gases straight away, this would be okay. I don't know, man, maybe. That's Gary and Bruce can start building depots in there. I don't know, it's not the worst thing. Uh, we'll go and put a depot out, a uh, widow mine out on the map. That's a fake Phoenix. You can see by how quickly it dies. And we've got our widow mine drop that's coming in, guys. So that one will come in soon. Behind this, though, we still don't have a third CC. So we've got to get that, and then we've got to explode our, our work account. Okay? Right there. Oh no! Pylon spotted us. Quick, boost in. Okay, so left, unload, left click. And then we're going to press stop and then unload in the other base. Borrow those Widow Mines. And we wanted to unload in the other Widow one. We got punished for that. And we don't really kill much there. So that was not a perfect Widow Mine drop by any means. But our opponent was very well defended. I could have paired up a Viking land with it. That shield battery is on range. So I can land a Viking here later. It's good to know. So we're going to put a tank here. Um, we're going to get an armory going so we can keep getting that. That was meant to be a deeper. Okay, uh, we can try and get our extra three factories now, okay, guys? Okay. And we can put a tank there. And a tank up here. And this tank. And these guys can go out here. And then we can start floating that down. And remember, we're not going to move our whole army down there. Okay? Let's give them the engineering bay as well. We can tell this Viking to land just to do some harassment, just to keep our opponent busy. And we're just going to keep macroing for now, guys. Just keep macroing. Let's put the guys on gas straight away. And let's just tell those all to return cargo. And look, this play is really well defended, guys. We can't do anything. So we are not finding a way in. Two more tech labs and a reactor. Plus one vehicle weapons. Keep building depots. Make an orbital there, which we don't have money for. There we go. And let's make sure all the rally points are on that base. And there we go, guys. So all we're doing now is building lots of tanks, lots of hellbats. But our pressure hasn't done any damage this game. So... Suddenly it's like, hey, wait a second, is this going to work nearly as well in a game where my harassment hasn't done big damage? Maybe, maybe not. By the way, if we had an armory earlier, um, he would have needed detection to, to actually clear that up. Command center upgrade. Now we can see my opponent has three probes on their third. I have a full third. Not quite full, but it'll be full very soon. So you should still feel pretty good in this sort of scenario. Now let's remember Blue Flame. That'll help quite a bit against Zealots, guys. It gives plus 12 versus light units. Um, for Hellbats, which is pretty sick. Now, we do want to just scan the production in case there's a Stargate swap, but we see extra gateways, so we know it's pretty chill. No, that's not going to be the case. And we can put turrets on the edge. Why do we put turrets on the edge, guys? Same as always. Uh, warp prisms, drops, all these sorts of things. And we can build one turret at the front. Turret at the front as well, which is... Let's build a Thor or two as well mixed in, by the way, guys. And every now and then, you just want to siege your tanks, by the way, guys. Because if your opponent surprises you with an attack, it really does suck. So what we can do now, guys, is we can dump these guys. And we can say, you go there, you go there, you go there. So we're going to try and take the watchtowers and just a little bit of map vision in general. We're still just building tanks. Hellions. Tanks. We can build Hellbats, even. And our opponent's just chilling. They're not really doing anything to us. So what marks our time to attack, guys? You want to attack well before you're maxed, okay? At maximum, you should be maybe 180 supply, okay? Now, what if your opponent's waiting for a base trade? What am I doing? I'm sending a Hellion to check there's no armies just waiting down here to backstab me the moment I move out. If I don't have vision to, like, check for that sort of stuff, then my opponent could absolutely be ready to come in and if we weren't sure we would be basically leaving more units at home just in case that was the case okay 
So we're going to build a fourth command center behind this, and we're going to move across the map. So where do we want to push? Left side seems good. My Hellbat managed to beat the, uh, the Zealot there. So we're going to rally over there. More Hellbats, more Thors. I'm actually mostly rallying Hellbats and Thors just because I have so many tanks. I want units that are a little more mobile. And we want to scan his army, and we go, okay, it's mostly Stalkers and Zealots. Hellbats beat Zealots really handily if you've got them in a clump, and uh, tanks beat Stalkers. So what are we doing, guys? We're just going to move here. We're going to start spreading our guys out. And if you're ever in panic, just siege them all. And then what do we do? Same as always. Just grab a few tanks. Shift, unsiege, move forward. Shift, unsiege, move forward. Shift, unsiege, move forward. And you don't want too many unsieged at once. You just kind of shift forward here. And if he goes around, that's kind of dangerous, isn't it? So. I am. Got some. Let's try and be ready over here with some Hellbats. So we cleaned them all up. Hellbats in a clump with Blue Flame are really good. So notice I changed my rally point back. When I saw him moving across the map, I was actually changing my rally point back and getting ready to defend here. But now, because those guys died and they didn't achieve anything, I think we can just push forward. Oh, so notice I just... Clicking those tanks, sieging them one by one. And if he comes on me, we're just going to keep him scanned. No surprise. The moment he moves forward, I'm just clicking my tank. Click siege, click siege, click siege. Siege, 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 siege. Now, we've walled ourselves off here, so we've got to kind of move these tanks forward in big chunk, chunks. And notice I'm control clicking the hellbats to move them back and forth as needed. You can always just box click as well. And we're going to try and fight here. Oh! Yeah, yeah, that's fine. He's fighting in tank. As long as he's mostly in tank fire, you don't want to go over here with your Hellbats where only one or two tanks are fighting. Because the tanks, if you lose all the Hellbats, the tanks are actually, like, surprisingly vulnerable. And tank Hellbat against most people, it's just devastating because people are letting this sort of army move across, set off. The Hellbats deal with the, the, the Zealots, the tanks deal with everything else. And it's absolutely, absolutely disgusting. Oh, chat, you guys are so... Yes, if he, if his army comes and jumps on top of me. Yes, that's what I said. You guys are disgusting. Is there a quick way to see all the workers? So, in the old days, I'd be really elitist about this. And I'd be like, uh, guys, you should know. If you have a full main base... 16 plus 6. So it's 16 on minerals, 6 on gas. That's 22 workers. Plus 22, 44, plus 3, 66. You should just know. How can you not know that number? There is a much easier way. Just hover over the supply on the top right and it'll tell you. But if you're very good at saturating your bases one at a time and keeping it really organized, you should always, even without hovering over that, have a pretty good feel of where your workers are. So obviously I'm like actually slightly under saturation here. But obviously half the mineral patches have also mined out. This base as well, slightly undersaturated, but some of the mineral patches are mined out. Um, so you would go around and grab these and send them to your fourth at some point. Yeah. How would you deal with Skytoss? Just Thors. Thors beat all flying units. So. What beats this? Mass Void? This is a solid style, so it's not really about, like, is there something that just straight up beats it? Obviously, because we're so tank hellbat focused, and that's why we were scanning the production earlier to check if there was Stargates, because after like maybe five or six tanks, we could have just been like, oh, he's going air now. We already have six or eight tanks. Let's go into, you know, Thor's. Instead, I've got like 20 siege tanks, which is a little ridiculous, right? So, well, what beats this army? Well, my opponent just had less stuff. Their macro was way worse. So, my opponent just didn't macro as well as me, essentially. Even though we did a much later third command center this game, we did a, a different branch of the build, which. You know what, I was kind of critical of it first, guys, but I actually think it worked out well. I do think, though, you do need to get a priority. Like, the moment after I started the medevac and the extra mines for my Widow Mine drop, which was a very late Widow Mine drop, by the way, and it didn't really find any damage, but it is what it is. Um, after I queued up these Widow Mines here, and those two, I should be going double gas. So, with this, this is a different variation. We decided, if you're going to be building a lot of Widow Mines... Liberators, Vikings, units that aren't really going to defend you against an all-in. To help us be safer, we're going to get our three factories and our double gas up really quickly. And this is a choice we're giving you guys. Oh, should I do this? Should I? You guys have to make decisions on your own. Don't ever ask me, should I do X? Explain to me what you want to do 
and ask me any fears you have or anything. Always be specific, right? I, I don't like hand holding. You'll never be a good StarCraft player if you can't make decisions and be comfortable taking risks. So be comfortable taking risks, be comfortable making mistakes. You'll never get better if you don't make mistakes. StarCraft is a very brutal environment because it teaches you this better than anything. So um, generally immortal Zealot Archon can actually do really well versus this army. So the big army that I was using at the end, guys, um, Immortals Zealot Archon does great. So Immortals wreck siege tanks. The problem is getting on top of the tanks. And if you clump up and fight through a choke point, you're taking massive splash damage. So to fight this sort of army, well, check it out, guys. My whole army is here. What if he did just fly a warp prism in, gets it past the turret, warps in 10 zealots here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose so much stuff at home. It's going to be a real nightmare. What about if half the army come, came down and had already broken these rocks? And he's got half an army coming in, cutting off these reinforcing tanks and hellbats and then setting up to flank me from behind in this big open area while he's also broken those rocks and another big army comes, both sides at once. Boom, boom. Tempests could chip away at it slowly. Yeah, I wouldn't really advise Tempests though, but essentially Tempests are, yeah, they beat tanks, but they get wrecked by Thors really hard. So yeah, Immortals are very good, but the Immortals won't kill Hellbats very fast, right? So, but if you can say all the Hellbats are at the front and you get like 20 Zealots coming in from the back, your Zealots will charge on the tanks and kill them so quickly. It is actually almost unfair. I also only have one Thor and one Cyclone. My opponent could technically be an absolute Chad, fly two Warp Prisms over my army, drop Zealots on top of it because I'm so lacking in anti-air. My opponent could have done a sneaky Void Ray swap, come out with like six Void Rays, kill the Cyclone and the Thor, and then kill a bunch of tanks before the rest of my anti-air gets across the map. Generally speaking, though, my opponent was just way behind. They are down 60 supply. So this is just a classic story of my opponent was kind of just chilling, not macroing that well. We made more stuff, and so we won. But the important thing is we made that stuff and we hit a clear timing attack. So as always, guys, people are like, oh, yeah, you know, Pig teaches you how to be aggressive and how to micro. You look, you have a vibe for macro. We are macroing like an absolute monster to get a max out here at, at 10 minutes, 30 minutes. And remember, I said you need to push out well before you're maxed. 160 supply is a general good marker for you guys to start moving out. Get your army organized, move out. Because look, I did about 170, and by the time I'm across the map, I'm already maxed out. I want to be trading with my opponent. I don't want to let, you know, my army just sit there for too long. Do Hellbats protect against Zealots if position right? They can, but I mean, can you really protect if you've got Zealots coming in from here, here, and here? Can you have Hellbats everywhere perfectly? Not perfectly. You're going to take a lot of tank-friendly fire. You, you, you know, the Zealots aren't going to evaporate. Whereas if they run head-on into a clump of Hellbats, the Zealots are just going to disappear. Um, should the third base start at six minutes? Isn't it late? Assuming there is a balance imbalance in your gas, it'll come after the gas. After Widow Mine 3 or 4, shouldn't the, the command center have started at six minutes? Okay, so you're looking to optimize the build order. It's the next thing that goes down after all of this. Uh, we probably could have squeezed it in pretty soon here. But it's more important to keep up depot production, keep up tank production, etc. Right? So, I mean, I'm pretty sure it goes down right on six minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Now, six minutes is right on time. That was right when I had 400 minerals. Remember, this is a, a three factory plus third and fourth gas, then third command center. So this is, this is a way we're showing you guys a variation in the build order to be a little bit different. Why don't pros play mech as much? It's really hard to utilize an advantage because mech's weakness is its immobility, right? I just talked to people like, what's, what's it weak against? I talked about backstabs, warp prisms, counterattacks, and flanks all dealing with it. No one does these at low levels. People don't do them super well until high levels, and they don't do it perfectly until pro level. At pro level, people are very good, even when they're behind, at slowing down in advance. They can they see your tanks moving out, they, they pretend they're about to fight it, you siege, they pull back. You start unseaging and move forward, they run forward, they force you to siege, they pull back. And they do that over and over again. And so you never get across the map. Well, by the time you do, they're base trading you or they're getting out. The unit. So, so you can get way ahead with mech, but it's hard to actually leverage that advantage. Whereas a bio army is very nimble, very fast, and it can just shove across the map and kill someone. So with the Widow Mine drop, um, you'll see we hit really late. And that's kind of part of what we're doing, because we're doing all sorts of different harassment, but we're doing it off safe openings. Now, we got spotted by a pylon, so you could argue this was a really bad idea going in here. You could also argue what kind of a crazy Protoss player is massing Blink Stalkers on two base just sitting there. Like, what? what is this strategy? What? But after being spotted, what I could have done is I could have waited in the dead space and then just waited until my opponent's harassing me, 
Or I could have dropped a scan and said, oh, that's way too many stalkers. Maybe drop a widow mine and run away or just don't drop it all. And that would have been fine. But wasting the widow mine drop was definitely a little costly. I was not expecting so many stalkers hanging around. Now, if you guys want super pro gamer points, some people love to do this even at low levels. It really just comes down to the style of player you are. There's so much freedom in StarCraft. You could be a silver player and do this every game. Box, not only box the Widow Mines and burrow them the way I do it. And you can, some people prefer to have these on a control group, by the way, the Widow Mines and the, and the Medivac. So they just select the control group once they're out and just press burrow. I prefer to just box them because I, I don't always put them on a control group beforehand. But if you want to be super pro at this point, you grab Widow Mine, click, Widow Mine, click. Or in this case, you go, wait, damn, where are we actually going to get a splashy? I might go Widow Mine and then like try to click on one of these birds or something like that. Or you could grab them both and keep spamming clicks on different units just so they don't fire. Just trying to wait until they bring their probes back and then let them fire. Both super try hard. We're not really bothering them with them because we're trying to do the Widow Mine drops in a bit more of a basic manner. Other thing I could have done there, guys, is I think what I should have done I think some, some of you probably noticed this, is why, I forgot about the Viking. Viking. If the Viking queued up to land in there, I don't micro. I just say, you go land there, and then I micro my, my Widow Mine drop in. Good chance my opponent's whole army runs up there to deal with the Viking. I get all four Widow Mines, borrow them, run away with the Medivac, blow up a bunch of probes. It's a good way of doing it. So guys, where is our MMR? Right now, we are in Platinum 1 MMR, and we are Almost, we are on the cusp. We are on the cusp of Diamond, where we're going to go back to Bio against Protoss, um, probably against Terran, maybe still play Mech against Zerg. <coughs> Since I really enjoy Mech against Zerg, and I do think it's fun. I mean, Bio is fun there as well, so we'll probably do a bit of both, maybe mix and match. Remember, guys, if you just skip into this part of the video, the ladder's locked as I'm playing this because the season is about to, um, to end. Because the season ends tomorrow, uh, or restarts tomorrow, sorry, it's been locked for the last week, so we, we're not getting promoted, even though we are actually in Platinum 1. So we are right now uh, 40, 70 MMR points off Diamond 3. So we've almost finished Platinum 2. So let's get some more good games in. Go to TVP again. Okay. Um, we could go Banshees again. We're not going to go Mass Banshee, guys. We're doing a solid mech build here. So... We're looking to just show you different units mixed in with the exact same plan of we're always looking to finish with a tank hellbat push because that is the strongest part of mech. What does an early lib build look like? That's actually the most basic version and I really love it because the lib is such an easy to micro unit. You just build one to two liberators out of your starport while playing super safe. Let's go back to that. I think, I think we might go back to that because it is such an elegant build order. And it's just so effective because it's it's so low APM. It's so easy. I think the other ones are good because it encourages you to learn to micro a bit more. But the Liberator is more of a macro. I'm, I'm working on my macro. I, I want to harass because I know being active is good in StarCraft, but I don't want to micro it too much. The Liberator is your friend. The Liberator is the unit that you queue into their base and it goes and kills stuff without you having to do anything. <laughs> It's a really good unit, guys. It's a very, very good unit. Um, I, I always complain about having to face Liberators. Vindicta, for example, is a Terran player who's literally a piece of shit. Worst pro gamer of all time. Every time he plays me, he queues like 13 Liberators into my bases. And I, it's so hard to micro against. I'm like pulling drones and queens or... Even in, even in non-TVZ, non he'll do it to me. So there's a probe in my base. As a general sure rule, I send an SCV to attack a probe. Go Marine, Orbital. Um, so guys, do we want to see that real standard Liberator or the Banshee? Let, let your thoughts be known in chat. We can raise the depot. Look at that, guys. One SCV surround. But Oh, Pro Mineral Walk. Okay. Can cut him off. It's okay, we got the Command Center down. This better uh, be good. Get up there. We're gonna tell that marine to patrol there, just because why not? Command center upgrade. Just gonna get one SCV in the factory. If you really want to rush the, fa the factory, you can delay that SCV. Get the factory first. Doesn't really matter too much. Try to squeeze in the marine and the SCV. This does slow down the second gas just a few seconds. And we want to get gas and then deeper. Remember. And at about no later than 2.30, you want to bring that Marine back. Now, let's try and see if he goes for the Nexus. We'll just keep that in range, that SCV. 
So let's come back up here. We build a tech lab. Keep building our CVs. And we've got the third guy on that gas now. And uh, the depot SCV rallies back. And of course, the factory SCV there. So we can pull our marines back to the high ground. No expansion, guys. So you know what? Let's send the SCV to scout, shall we? So we're just going to go scout around our base. And remember, don't be starting. Don't be starting your starport yet. You've got to go cyclone first. Always. Cyclone, marine, and then the starport goes down. People were more keen for the liberator, guys. So it's going to be the liberator harass. I don't know if we're going to get there. Now, why wouldn't you get there, pig? Because we are being all in. We're going to send that SCV into scouts. And I shouldn't have dropped the mule there. That should have been dropped on the high ground. The fact our opponent hasn't expanded yet and we're getting into diamond territory definitely, uh, I think, speaks volumes about my opponent's intention. So we're going to put a bunker there, not too far out, because we want it to kind of be covered from the high ground. And we've got a cyclone, three marines. I think we can drop the mules on the low ground now. And this guy, 330, no expand. So what are we doing? We're going to mineral walk in the base, and then we're going to queue it around to scout what's up. And what do we see, guys? Twilight Council, so it might be DTs, it might be Blink. It's a gateway, so it looks like it's going to be Blink. So let's build a depot down there. And all we want to do is we want to keep building tanks. So we're going to deprioritize the Liberator. It's going to be with our next little set of gas, okay? So we're going to put a tank here. Now the Cyclone and extra units can all defend the high ground, okay, guys? So we've got that there, build that. Liberator can now start up, and that Liberator is going to rally out the right, down the side, and then it's going to come in, and it's going to siege up in the back of the main. So I've queued the starport rally to go right SCV along the edge. Ready. Whatever we do, don't mess with that, okay? We're gonna put one marine out front. We're gonna keep building depots right now. And because my opponent's one base, what are we doing? We're getting extra factories up as well. But more important is just unit production right now, okay? So this tank's covering the main. And we'll get those extra factories up in the near future, okay? So, oh, oh, it could be DTs as well, right, guys? Oh, this was really dumb of me to not build an engineering bay if we actually thought about it. If your opponent's one basing you, engineering bay is part of the defensive plan, but I forgot about it. So I'm just calculating this mech build. So, oh, it's okay. It is blink, guys. Bring all the SCVs. So I control click the SCVs. We're right clicking those on the bunker. And we're going to send the cyclone down as well. Nope. Okay, so send most of these guys back. And we're going to keep building tanks. This tank will go there as well. I think maybe here. And we're going to try and build two more factories. Okay. So we've got those SCVs repairing. We can come forward with the cyclone. We're going to try and run the cyclone back. Everything else just fights on its own, guys. Oh! Oops, that was bad. So we're going to A move the SCVs, send our marines after it. And by the way, our liberator is queued in at the same time as this. And this is actually all fine, because we built so much defense. So our Liberator is going to go siege up the opponent's base. We've got the Marines, the SCVs from both bases here. And we're just A-moving, 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 A-moving. And as soon as we're ready, we're going to go back on gas, and then control shift to deselect all the SCVs, all the moves. And uh, let's see if we can get that. That should be game over, guys. We're just going to build that again. Put a tank there, because the Liberator has killed everything in his base. So we put a tank there. And Liberator's a real nice unit when you're being all end, because you just kind of, as long as you're not F2-ing, if you F2 a lot, there's no point. You shouldn't even build the Liberator. And that's me. Lately, I've been F2-ing a lot, but I'm really working hard to not actually do it much in this series. And I think it's probably making me a slightly better player. Um, but yeah, the Liberator just killed his economy. My opponent was already only on one base, guys. We're just going to build a turret um, in each base just to make sure that, you know, we can't get surprised. And we just want to kind of go, okay, let's get back to a normal build. So a lot of people go, okay, how do I kill him now? How do I kill him? He's, he's overcommitted. I should be able to win. No, 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 you're playing mech. Don't even think about counterattacking. We already have ruined his economy. We can build another Liberator. That'll be our next little piece of harassment. We can send an SCV in to see if he's even managed to get an expand up. And all we're going to do here is... Oh, okay, he's being very annoying. So grab the SCVs back. We can grab this tank, put that up there. And we're going to get the armory. That'll go there. We can go there. Bam, bam. 
try to repair the SCV. We have the tank if we need to. Our opponent does leave, so we put guys back on gas. Use that shift deselecting trick as we always do. Now we need to cover the main, make sure that doesn't get caught out. Um, we just built a bunch of factories, so we're a little light on production right now. So we're going to send the Liberator around one more time on the edge and then to siege up the main. Okay. And do we have guys on gas in the main? The natural? Yep. Let's build depots. Keep building tanks. I don't think my opponent has high ground vision. We've got six factories. We've got an armory. Oh, the third command center. I was like, there's something we're missing, right, guys? Third command center should have gone down before all these factories. <laughs> Remember, we did the, the very safe three factory double gas, but we still should, from there, be going back to a bit more of a normal play. All right, so we've got... Oh, I don't like that factory positioning for either of those because the units could get trapped there, guys. So we're going to go there and there to make sure units can drive around, okay? Keep building depots. And we can kind of go, okay, you're there, you're there. And this is beyond safe at this point, right? So from here, we can go, okay, cool. Let's actually move our tanks forward. All of our new tanks and Hellions are going to secure the third. And look at this. Our Liberator came in one more time, killed multiple Stalkers. And our opponent doesn't have an economy, right? Well, what if he's taken a base? So we're sending Hellions out to check every base on this map. And we're just continuing to build Hellions, continuing to build tanks, tanks and Hellions, Hellions and tanks. We can kill kill those if we want. And just be really methodical. Don't ever get over eager as a mech player. Anytime your opponent extends into you, you go, awesome. I'm gonna get to my next step even even quicker in relation to you than I normally would. So let's take our third base. We're gonna select our command center key, shift click, rally point, so that we don't mess up the land order that we've given. Or you can just rally it before giving the land order. Whatever habit works for you. This is our army. Okay, so we're going to go tanks there, tanks there, tanks there, more Felbats. And you can see, check it, we've got a third base. Take the gases. Whoops. Keep building SCVs. We're at 57 workers, so we just need a handful more. Not too many. Still building depots in the main. We can build those down here now since we're running out of space a little bit. Our opponent doesn't have an expansion, which means they're still in this game with no business being in this game, guys. We could actually just go kill them at this point. They have a handful of stalkers. But the, the point here was showing, number one, get your position back to where it should be. Unseage all of our tanks. And now we can go do some finishing blows. Building some Thors, some Hellions. Cyclones do rally across the map really fast, so there's definitely an argument behind rallying Cyclones just to get units across the map very fast, but they're very micro-intensive, so it really depends on what's going on. DT's incoming chat says, well, we've already got a turret in each base, and because we're about to move out, or slash we are moving out now, we don't really care. We've got so many tanks, and we saw our opponent only has a small set of Stalkers that we are completely solid. And guess what? Fourth base. And take fifth base. Just to make sure we have a next step. But all we're doing, guys, tank aliens, tank aliens. We're going to even rally across the map. Now, it, like I said, if you don't have a lot of map control, you don't really know what's going on, that's not a good move. Rallying across the map's really bad. So we're already just grabbing these tanks, sieging them forward everywhere, and we're just kind of leapfrogging that our opponent. Soak was coming up the right side with some stalkers, but obviously they were completely dead. So the one big mistake we made that game is we forgot to build an engineering bay. Remember at 3.30, opponent doesn't have a response, build a bunker, which we're doing a bunker by default um, with our build order, normally at four minutes. We did it a bit earlier this game just to be super safe because we saw no command, no nexus. And as we're getting towards diamond, we're taking it from a bit more of a one size fits all scouting to being a little more uh, set kind of this is versus Protoss scouting, this is versus Terran scouting, this is versus Zerg scouting, and a Protoss not having an expansion by 310 is incredibly alarming. So, um, yeah, we queued the lib around the very edge of the map was good. Uh, we just kept building tanks here, which was already going to be the build order. The only difference, guys, is this tank would not have queued up straight away. We would have normally prioritized the Liberator and then built extra tanks. The reason we did the tank is obviously we saw our opponent was only on one base. 
and we did forget the engineering bay. Otherwise, we would have built an engineering bay. Maybe not built blind turrets. Maybe just built one turret in the natural, right? Because all we're worried about is DTs. As long as we have scans and stuff, you know, we should be fine. And we did send that SCV in from behind the natural as, as well, remember? We said, look, it's 3.30. We've confirmed they're not expanding for friggin' ages here. For some reason, they're building a shield battery at home. Who knows why? And we saw, oh, the Twilight was upgrading. So we said, look, this is probably Blink. Could be something else, could be DTs, but always nice to have the scout. And we're like, that's cool. We've got a tank in a bunker. And then we just put more tanks and we should be good. Now, I should have raised the depot and it, it would have been even harder for these stalkers to get in. But as it is, the tanks all covering each other. Cycling, getting microed as well. All this stuff worked out really well. If the opponent was to counterattack you, do you care or do you keep on the attack? It really depends on the situation. Like I said, I kind of scanned and saw their army was at home. I cleared up their proxy. I'd scouted around the whole map with Hellions. So I felt okay to even rally across the map. But this is why if there was a higher chance of that, like I said, if, if, our, if we don't have all that vision, I would have left my rally at home. And that means we would have had plenty of tanks and Hellbats and Thors and things popping out at home to deal with any small counterattack. If our opponent tries to straight on base trade us, we might have to give up our third base later on. But it's okay to give up your third base. So if we go to this later stage where we're talking about, it's totally fine for me to give up my third base. Try to lift it, try to pull back the SCVs. Because look, as I move out, right? If we have a rally point here, we're not going to rally out into the open, okay? Because we don't have a big army anymore. Rally here or maybe even up in the main. Because then even if a giant army comes in, if you get, say, three or four tanks on the high ground, and guys, we've got six factories building. It's not going to take a long time. If, you, if we have three tanks and the wall raised, how are they going to get in? It's very hard for them to get in. So, yeah. So, as, as you're, you're willing to give up a base, but you'll still hold on to your main ramp and at least part of your natural. You should be able to save the command center. And then your mech push continues and kills them, right? So that's a play you can make. If you've just moved out, and they come in with a bunch of zealots, maybe you just aim move your army back, clean it up, and then go for the push. When were you looking for the engineering bay? Well, basically from about 3 minutes 30 is, is when you go, hey, this player, I mean... 3.30, normally our standard right from bronze response was, you don't have one base, me make bunker. Keep doing build, but also then add engineering bay. So I wouldn't say the engineering bay needs to go down immediately, unless you're dying a lot on the ladder to invisible units. But if you do want to be really safe, you could just go bunker, engineering base straight away, and you should be good. Um, so we saw the power of the Liberator there where the opponent is so focused on the all-in that it literally kills everything. That's 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 the most brutal. He was only on like 22 probes anyway, got him down to like eight. Oof, that's a rough one. How do you deselect your SCVs when you send them to gas? Uh, yeah, you got to shift click using the wireframe down the bottom, you'll notice. It's cloning. Um, exclamation mark fundamentals. I go over that in, in details. Uh, in detail. What's going and, on? Um, that's a very useful mechanic. All right, guys, we've got another Protoss. Is using the set rally point hotkey to avoid moving floating buildings good, says Red Knights? I've never even thought of doing that. I, I, it, sure, I guess you could use that. There is a set rally point button. I don't even have it hotkeyed. I was like, why would I want a hotkey for that piece of shit? I guess that's a thing. Yeah, I just right click for it always, so I've never even thought about it. Is there a VOD playlist of all the bronze to GM Terran? Of course, guys. Of course. Exclamation mark BDGM. All going up on our coaching channel, as are all future bronze to GMs. The Zerg one went up on our old, on our main YouTube, but all educational stuff is up on the uh, coaching channel now. Alright, so we'll send this SCV across to Scout. It's TVP again. SCV and um, ready. chat, Liberators or Banshees. Which one would you like to see? Yep. Okay, so um it's your time. SCV ready. Notice we grab the guy, make sure he mines from the inside. And this guy, of course. Let's set our camera locations. Second. We like the defensive third, and then we'll take the fourth as the front base. Gold base is the fifth, just because it's the next closest, but we could easily take that one if we don't like taking the gold. What's going on? Orbital plus marine. We see a nexus already, guys. Awesome. Big 
job, huh? Okay, chat, chat's down with banshees. They'd really like to see speed banshees. That's not Been really a good idea. Um, so the great thing about getting a few banshees with cloak is it's going to force a big response without us over committing to a unit that objectively sucks ass in frontal combat. So it's a very cool Demand harassment play, but things like that we can toy with in masters. We're definitely not toying with it until we're a little bit higher on the ladder. Uh, we'll build that second marine, squeeze that in there. Two Banshees is already very micro-intensive, like we can get crazy value out of it if we use it correctly. So it's already going to incentivize us to, I think, micro well above a Platinum level and give you a good motivation to get better at that over time. Build the tech light. Let's get these two guys on gas. Tell that one to come to the inside and then gather. Just that good habit to make sure that guy doesn't pop into the gas from the arse and then pop out in the arse. We always want to stay... Nice and efficient wherever possible. And so there we go. We're just swapping the add-ons around. Keep, get the cyclone out. Get the marine out. Get the starport. So people wanted to see Banshee. Okay. So after the tank, we'll swap the starport onto that tech lab. That's how we'll do that. And Banshee, like Raven, like Battlecruiser, we do want a quick third gas to make that work, right? I think it'll just be way smoother if we do it that way. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to leave our units here. Keep them safe. Don't leave them out front. If your opponent surprises you with an attack, you can end up in a lot of trouble. Rally to the natural. Shot mules there now. We'll build that tank in a moment. And awesome. And we will get the reactor as well. So we're going to build a spotting depot down there. Uh, we can... Whoops. This. And Starport's just going to swap over onto that tech lab, like we said. Keep coming up SCVs. Let's build that bunker. It's four minutes. Oh, my lord. Well, I think we've got enough units. I don't think we want to siege mode this, guys. Okay, so we're going to swap this over, because remember, when your opponent is doing stuff that doesn't demand your attention, you don't look at it. I A moved it, I didn't even look. It looks like my Cyclone died. Doesn't matter. Okay. Going to build the Banshee, going to build some Hellions now to go with that. I'm going to tell that SCV to auto repair. This tank is going to ruin those stalkers' day. So we're going to just unload the marines, A move them, go back to macro. Let's build a depot. Let's get that third command center. I know this takes a lot of discipline, but that's me saying, look, that tank was always going to get off like three or four shots. Just look away. Keep building SCVs, mules. Keep building SCVs and mules. You know, keep doing what you need to do. And we're just going to leave the banshees there for now and just try and kind of gather them up. I also, up. we know he has a warp in point nearby. So we're just gonna scout where it is exactly. We've got the third command center, so we take the extra gas as always. And uh, we're gonna get our extra factories up now. What's going on? So we're gonna go factory, factory. Um, and you know what's really cool? If you guys are all like, oh man, what if people go DTs? Just wall off a little quicker with your depots is a great way to make sure you're somewhat safe against that, because that gives a really good stop gap. If they don't drop the DTs then, you're in a really good position. So we had two Banshees with Cloak out, so we were about to send those over, and we were going to queue them to the staging zone. Don't send them in until you're ready to look at it. Chat saying no engineering bay? Yeah, you're not meant to have an engineering bay. There's no reason to here, because our opponent's done a normal macro build. If you just build a blind engineering bay every game, it's a really bad idea. Um, build the extra reactor that goes there. What else? We all know what happens next, guys. Factory, factory, factory. So three more factories. We keep building tanks behind that. We get plus one weapons, and after those three factories, we grab the engineering bay. We don't want to grab it before then, unless we have good reason to. Now, some people will just be like, "Look, I see DTs all the time. I'm always going to get it earlier than that." If you want to, sure. But you've got scans, um, you've got unit production, 
obviously if people are DT dropping you a lot, we could just get it earlier. We can make that adjustment. But the important mindset that you need to get into here is don't be a pussy. And I mean this, obviously it's a joke, the wording, but I actually mean it. If you guys are worried about things that aren't happening to you a lot, and if you're trying to be safe against every little thing that happens to you one time, you're going to end up playing Coward Craft rather than Starcraft. Now, this is actually a problem that even pro gamers have, where they start obsessing over and thinking about things that happen very rarely. And the problem is, if you try to be safe against things that only happen in 4% of your games every, t every time, you are literally playing against things that aren't happening, right? You are you are playing against things that are not happening in your game right now. So it's it's not a good thing to do. And guys, by the way, if you're if your game ends early, do what I'm doing here. Go through, do the macro. Do the macro still. Okay, I've got to remember to get double depot builders at that time. Let's get into the tank hellion production. Let's remember to get blue flame. Try to still go through because it's still really good reps on your build order, especially when you're first getting used to a build order. Um I'm actually doing this subconsciously because I was just like, oh, I need to like memorize this build variation. It's a little different when I go for the cloak banshees. And always we wait for them to get to the rally point and then we cloak them, send them in and we micro these for a good 20, 30 seconds, get as much as we can. So we can do super pro micro. This is what I do. This is what most pros do, guys. Right click, A, a left click, right click, A left click. Right click, A left click, right click, A left click, right click, A left click. If you do it fast enough, the Banshees never really stop moving and they're kind of almost gliding. Now, as we said last time we were using Banshees, what are we always gonna do? Usually, for most of us. Most of you guys who aren't interested in learning that, and I know a lot of you aren't even gonna try it, just shift right click. Now the problem there is we just are showing an example of why right click can be bad. We misclicked on the Nexus, and now they're not gonna do anything else until that Nexus is dead. Likewise, another way that can hurt you Research complete. is, okay, I didn't realize there's a shield back for that. Notice we accidentally misclicked on the ground. So they're gonna waste time moving to any misclicks on the ground. So this is the reason for anyone who wonders why pros like to A click or even A shift click. So if we do misclick, at least they get an A move and they'll just kill whatever's near them. It's not the biggest deal though. We still will right click sometimes if we don't have enough APM or attention for the scenario. So you guys have got to adapt a little bit based on exactly what's happening. Um, but yeah, definitely because our opponent was hitting us with a four gate attack, could they have followed it up with DTs? They could, but was it likely? Not really. I mean, our opponent actually mined a lot of gas, which they didn't need to for this four gate attack. So they technically maybe could have been squeezing it in, but because I knew my opponent had gone for two things. So, so how? Do, why did I not feel any urge to get an engineering bay in this game, guys? Especially. We knew he did a very fast expand. And the moment those first adepts came in, we knew they had a very quick proxy gate attack. And it was at least three gates and it was proxied on us. And that's huge. That tells us a lot. Because this is four minutes and there's already five adepts coming in. Guys, this is crazy. That's a very fast adept attack coming in. That's five adepts. That means they've chronoed warp gate. They've committed a lot. So this is a very big mineral investment. Gateway is that, blah, blah, blah. Plus the Nexus. That's a huge mineral investment. So essentially... It's kind of just one of these things where it's like, unless my opponent's just, that's a completely fake nexus, it's really hard for my opponent to have enough minerals to also afford a DT shrine. A lot of people look at this and go, but look, he has 400 minerals. Yeah, right now. But would he have been able to hit this attack this fast if a minute and a half ago he, or a minute ago he started the DT shrine? Probably not. So that's something that we want to do. How do you do this build with Ling Harass? Or how do you micro Ling Harass? I shift click, A move my Zerglings. Then I box some and repeat, repeat that. So not all lings focus the same SCV. Oh, if... Oh, you just mean so they like get into different areas of the mineral line before A moving get good? Uh, I mean, you can just right click your Zerglings right into the mineral line and then A move and they'll attack whatever's next to them. So if they're all in a month, whereas if you A move from the edge, they get stuck behind each other. All you need to do is, is right click. You wouldn't want to shift, right click shift A move. The reason get good that you wanted, to, you wouldn't want to do that is then every Zergling has to touch that point on the ground where you've right clicked before they start fighting. 
which means the first six or seven Zerglings are going to touch it okay and then try to fight, and the other Zergling's going to be like, Bro! Bro! I need to touch that piece of ground before I'm allowed to fight! And so some of your Zerglings are biting, and the other one's like, Let me at him! And I get you, you can, you're trying to do it where you then split them. You're like, these guys shift click there, these guys shift click there. Seems a bit APM intensive to me. I normally, instead of that, what I often do is I just click them in the mineral line. I just go, oh, right click in the mineral line. If I have the APM to micro them a bit more, I can look at them. I can have them on a control group or I can click the minimap. But normally I just, I just be like, okay, don't click on the edge of the mineral line. Click here deep in the mineral line. And then, and, 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 and. If it's a small number of Zerglings, that's okay. And you don't need to A move afterwards. It's just an extra work. It's the same thing as you're doing. You just don't need the A move. Just do a right click. But yeah. If there's Marines or a cannon, I have to click the workers, says Get Good. Okay, well, you, you said A move. You're talking about A click. You're talking about A clicking on units. That's not an A move. An A move is when you A click on the ground, because that's an attack move. So that's why you confuse me, Get Good, because. A move is very different to actually targeting units with individual clicks. Um, yes, I know what you mean now. You're, you're boxing the Zerglings, shift click the SCVs or shift A click the SCVs. Box some other Zerglings, shift A click. That's a perfect way of doing it. If you've got optimal, if you've got the, the APM and the time to do it, that's a really good way of doing it. Hold position can sometimes work nicely. Um, if you've got like a ton of Zerglings, that can work pretty well. Yeah. Have you ever thought about adding the keyboard pressed overlays on stream? It's purely aesthetic. No one actually follows what's going on there very well, Nox. Um, it's one of those things that kind of looks cool. I've thought about trying it for a day or two, but I wouldn't want to keep it there because I honestly feel like it just takes up real estate and 99% of the audience gets nothing out of it. 1% will go, or 0.9% will go, oh, that's cool. And 0.01% will be like, oh, I'm actually watching the keys to learn something but it's it's just such a small thing and it takes up real estate so i'm kind of like mm, i don't know man guys we are one game from diamond okay last mech game let me know guys what harassment unit should we finish on should it be a battle cruiser again <laughs> let's see what we do can we click on the performance tab for the apm sorry i don't really care we're, we're very focused on teaching you guys a lot of different adjustments, so we're not sitting here focusing on trying to handicap my APM or anything. I'm not playing especially fast, I'm not doing a lot of fancy micro, but I definitely am macroing a little bit fancier, because most of my mental faculties are not repeating the same build order right now. We're talking about how to adjust the build order, how to adjust the different scenarios, that sort of stuff. So, as a result, I am not sitting here going, oh, I'm really hard, I'm really trying hard to pretend I'm a diamond player. Because like, sometimes I've had people get really angry seeing me play fast during, during Bronze Gym. They go, this is disgusting. You know, Vibe plays slowly when he does it. Winter plays slowly. You're playing fast. This is upsetting me because this is not really plat play. I can't learn anything from this. And I go, well, I mean, if you can't learn anything from this, well, it's because you're not fucking opening your eyes or your ears, number one. Number two, um, like, they, every, they all, everyone wins all their games when they're playing Bronze to Jam. Everyone does it. They win 90% plus of their games. People are like, yeah, but they do it slower. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I get sometimes, like, I'm more focused on explaining a strategic reaction or this or that, and I'm showing you how to do a thing, and it's not done at the, the super slow speed. And that's, that's the price we pay for me teaching you more than one thing, and the show not just being me go macro better and do the exact same opening for 400 different episodes, which I know some people want. But I've always said from the start, I'm not going to handhold. I want to show you guys as many different things as possible. So I'm not just giving one guide where you only play one situation and you don't understand why things happen. You've got to understand why things are happening in StarCraft. You can't just be like, hey, I saw I need a video of Pig defending this exact thing or I'm never going to defend that exact same thing. And I'm like, well, you're missing the whole point. You're never going to get good at StarCraft if you need an exact example of every single situation to get better at that situation. That's not you getting better at StarCraft. That's you just copying something. And the problem that's going to have is what about when the meta shifts and people What's are doing different on? units you haven't seen someone encounter in a Bronze Gym? You're going to be completely lost. You're going to have no idea what to do. So this is why I, I want to show you guys concepts. I want to show you guys how to think. I want to teach you how to fish, not give you a fish, you know? Whatever that fucking Bible shit is. Um, you guys know... <laughs> Okay, he hasn't expanded. That's fine. All right, we're just going to kill that guy. Um, oh, wrong add-on. Whoops. Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I was ranting a little bit much there. So we're going tech lab. 
We don't have the second Marine this time, so we could get in trouble. So we're gonna keep this Marine right back so he can get supported if he needs to. We're gonna leave this SCV here, so we will see if the command center goes down. And uh, what was the unit everyone wanted? Complete. Cyclone, Banshee, Banshee, Cyclone, Hellion, Banshee. It's a TBT, what do you guys wanna see? Let me know. All right, we're a little slow into gas, so this build's gonna be a little loose this game. So if we die to something, if we screw up, our build ends up in a bad spot. Look at how delayed our starport is, guys. It's purely because we didn't get our gas on time. We haven't put on gas. Clean it up. People want to see Raven harass. Okay. Yeah, we can do Raven harass, I guess. Okay. It's not the greatest first turn. It can be really good first turn. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Okie doke. All right. Um, so we're building the Cyclone. We're building Marines. Um, let's get that gas up, shall we? So remember, Cyclone, Raven, BC, any of these really gas-heavy things that cost you 300 plus gas, you need to get that third gas immediately. That's something we've already talked about. Um, let's try and rally down there. <laughs> Ranting is fun. Um, so we want to once again put that on the tech lab this is what we do with all of our tech unit transitions right all of our banshee raven battlecruiser we've realized quick third gas float the stop onto the tech lab is how we kind of adjust this opening piece our of the build what's happening oi what the hell bro why is there an scv here i'm confused okay we're gonna build a tech lab and a reactor all right, so remember, once the bunker and the tank are up, we put the cyclone on the edge of our main. We're building ravens, and we're going to build a reactor. Marines in there. Bunker there. Gotcha. Keep building SCVs and mules. We paused on that production for a bit, which is very lazy. So where do we want our raven to rest? I think we want our first... Oh, shit, he hasn't expanded, guys. Oh, yes, he has. I was about to say, oh, shit, we need to react. We're a bit slow to react. It's all good. So our raven is going to go along the very far right and harass the main, our first one. And then our other one will go the other side. Now, while we're waiting for that, what do we do? Command center. Fourth gas. We're going to get Barry building depots nonstop. Um, let's build another raven and keep building tanks here so that we're nice and solid. And uh, we can rally the other starport up there. So we've rallied it along the edge of the map to be ready to attack the natural. Okay. Put the guys on gas. Next step is, of course, extra factories, isn't it, gang? So a couple more factories going to be next up. And remember, we can go factory there, factory up here. You'll notice some games I build Hellions straight away. Some games I keep building tanks. So it's kind of interesting to see the difference between the two. I'm still doing it a little bit by feel. But remember, write down on a napkin, on a notepad, whatever, uh, whatever your favorite path is, and keep repeating it. Speaking of keep repeating it, guys, that's... that's that's a ban battle cruiser coming in. That's a battle cruiser. So we're gonna cancel a, a tank, build that. How do I know this is a battle cruiser, guys? Okay, so very simple. Um, uh, we can grab the SCVs and run them away. Just make sure we don't go in range. Let's try and get these Marines. Oh, we didn't quite kill it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to unseize our army. We're going to F2, A move there. We're then going to grab this guy, drop two auto turrets, and then run the hell home. Because our opponent is forcing us to react a little bit, aren't they? Let's put guys on gas, keep putting our CVs. Did we get the auto turrets down? One of them was blocked. So put another one down and then run it home. And what you want to do is if that runs away, they won't auto lock onto buildings, guys. So you want to do that manually, okay? Now, we want to swap our reactor so we get a few uh, guys out if needed. Command center. And remember, we don't want to make the mistake that our opponent made earlier today. Oh, he's, he's building another tech up. He's going to keep building BCs. Awesome. Guys, we're playing a Chad gamer, in case you were wondering. Okay? Um, this guy is an absolute Chad gamer. So we're going to take our third base, and we've, we've got to kind of get back on track. We've got a turret just to help back us up. Because we've got two Cyclones, we're good. Now, if you really want, you can go Magfield here. Why are we not going to bother? You know what? We'll bother. We'll get Magfield. We'll double down. Maybe you guys have been traumatized. We will even build a third Cyclone just in case. Because they're not a bad unit. They're just not our favorite unit. So we'll get Magfield, and we will build Vikings out of this. 
up to about six. And then we'll reassess. But other than that, we're still going for our normal plan. Three more factories go down. And we want one of those on a reactor. And two on tech labs. So we're going to build that reactor ahead of time. We want to take our gases on our third. And we want to build a turret up there. We want to add the factories to our control group. And right now, I'm just going to put my tanks out. We're going to leave one tank in the main, maybe. Nah, no, no need to, because my opponent's probably hacking it. So we're just putting... We've got ravens, three ravens, two tanks. And we're just going to keep going, hey, what are you building? And he's going to try and go Vikings one at a time out of a Tech Lab starport into barracks. So, yeah, this makes no sense. We're playing a Silver League player? What is this? It's crazy. What's going on? It's cool. Anyway, uh, we'll keep doing that. Um, float our factories over. So remember, don't overreact against it. This is more than enough to kill anything, especially with a few more Vikings coming out. Did we get an armory? Oh, we never made an armory this game, guys. So because we're so late to it, we're going we're gonna to show you guys something different. The double armory! Which, you guys, if you really wanted to, I said when I started the mech section, I wasn't really going to do that. But if you want to, we can do it. We're going to play a bit of a bigger style this game. But notice we see my opponent doesn't have a third. Uh, we can even take an SCV to just confirm that there's no corner bases hidden out there. So if your opponent's making battle cruisers, always check for corner bases. Because you're probably playing Florencio on one of his 14 Smurfs. Um, or or Nathanius, maybe. I don't know. This player did show they were going bio. But, uh... Okay, let's, let's just slow down a bit. I'm playing a bit too fast. It's our last game to get to Diamond, guys. So let's slow down. Build another turret, just in case. Let's scan. What are we looking at? Vikings are still coming out one at a time, guys. So we're going to keep building Vikings just to win the air war. Just because we're already on that production. And because we've got the Ravens out, that's going to that's gonna be a thing. I notice we've got an SCV there as well. So we're building lots of Hellbats, lots of uh, tanks. We're going to drop some supply drops there. Let's get the upgrades going. Notice we don't have 100 gas, so I just keep tapping it or holding it down until we get 100 gas. We're going to get two more guys to build depots to join Gary and Bruce. You can see my macro cycles have been really sloppy today. So I've been doing a bit more a bit more pro-gamer shit. And we're getting close to the point where we want to push. So the trick is, Raven, Viking, This is the, I'm actually going to have a separate control group, guys, for Viking, Raven to main army. Now, if you guys find moving your army around like this is really hard, I'm just literally tapping the two keys. Flo's in the chat. What's up? Always check. I actually didn't technically check the bottom right base. So I'm going to check that. Um, if you guys find this hard, a little trick, guys. Just take your second key of air units and just right click them on a tank. Okay. And now they'll just follow. And then you can still micro it in the battle. I think it's probably better for you guys to get used to microing both when you're moving around. But, you know, whatever works for you, essentially. What's that? Uh -oh. All right, so I haven't started building any Thors yet, so let's do that. But ch guys, we're, we're past 170 supply. We're going to get moving. My opponent's taken two bases at once. They have a battle cruiser, a handful of Marines, and a siege tank. So I'm going to build Thors just to make sure in case I lose my anti-air, we're good. And we're also going to take a base over here as well. And what are we doing, guys? I'm sending a heli in to do that. We're going to take gases, and let's go. All right, let's go win this game. We obviously have way more units than our opponent. So I think this is a situation where there's only like one or two tanks in each scenario. I think there's two tanks there. So we don't really need to do anything other than A move. So we're going to use the A move, and then what do we do? We want to go interference matrix on all of the tanks, okay? So we do lose one raven. Oh, no, no, we didn't. All right, so let's do that again, guys. So I'll show you what we do. A move, and then what we're going to do, scan, interference matrix, interference matrix, shift, right click back, and then control click the Vikings and A move them again. Okay, and now we can tell them to interference matrix again, but nope, they're all out of energy now. This was a pretty messy push because I literally never sieged because we had so many units. So I've decided eventually to siege here, and it seems like it should be working. We've got Thors at the rally point, so we can high impact payload those and move them across the map. And now we can go back to our traditional move the tanks forward one or two at a time sort of mode. 
We can drop auto turrets, which we didn't already use. Your forces are under attack. We can just click on that tank. So unsiege tanks actually do really well versus siege tanks, for those who don't know. And the Vikings will kill the battle cruiser. So we can basically grab these three, just put those in range of that. Make sure they're all shooting it. We just keep attacking towards the main. We're building tanks, sell that stores. Tanks, sell that stores. And we never made upgrades, so we could start 2 2. We could put guys on gas. Mineral field depleted. Or we could just focus on moving in and killing our opponent and do that after. Up to you guys. We're going to move these tanks forward. Get the tanks on up. That should be good. <clears throat> so. If you just have that much more army than your opponent, not sieging is a skill that Gumio and 4GG have taught me, guys. So these very good mech Terran players basically say, hey, why siege up? If you outnumber your opponent that much, just shove in. They just don't have any units, and they're all spread everywhere. My opponent just didn't have an army, didn't really have any numbers at all. Just a handful of marines with weak upgrades, handful of siege tanks spread everywhere. Obviously, I should have sieged here a little bit earlier, probably, especially once that tank was shooting me. But it's fine. Is there no armor upgrade for air anymore, to send you? No, it's it's shared. Air and vehicles have the same armor upgrade. Yeah. One of the many buffs Terran players, uh, Terran revisionists, don't want you to know about because they want to talk about how hard their tools are. Vikings, they don't have 125 hit points anymore. They have 135. But they won't tell you this, will they? They won't talk about, they won't talk about the fact that Protoss upgrades take way longer than the other races upgrades now. They won't talk about the fact that the Viking has 10 more hit points. The fact that you get double upgrades for just one with armor on mech and flyers. The fact that their Raven can lock down a six or eight supply unit with a single cuck matrix. Terran is actually overpowered guys. Um, yeah, I mean, my opponent, did some cool stuff, but uh, yeah, basically, how did I know it was a battle cruiser? Let's go back to that. Because that's. How did I even see that? Oh, my Raven flew over it, didn't it? Our SCVs are under attack. So there's Battle a reason I complete. knew that this was. Does anyone know in the chat? How do we know that this is a battle cruiser? Does anyone know? How do I know it's not a Raven or a Banshee? SCV ready. Let's see if chat gets this one right. Uh, Tech Lab says K Man, timing, no upgrades, too late, no cloak, and no one proxies Raven. <laughs> Guys, right now I spot on the money. <laughs> no cloak, and it could be a Raven. Technically, it could be a Raven. Yeah, and the reason we know it's not an upgrade, guys, is there's no bubbles. There's no bubbles on the Tech Lab. So you can always tell when a Tech Lab is upgrading because there's big green bubbles coming out of here. Really visually obvious. So as soon as I saw there was no bubbles, I was like, oh, it's a BC. Technically, it could have been a Raven. But I mean, if we overreact, build an extra cyclone, you know, etc., it's not the end of the world. I put an engineering bay down as well, just in, in a bit of panic there, so I could add turrets if needed. And we do lose quite a few SCVs, but we see that if their Yamato is not done, which it almost never is for the first battle cruiser, cyclone. Basically, you do lock on. And remember, even before he was in my base, because it could it could have been Banshee, and Banshee just finished. It could have been, could it have been no cloak banshee? There's no reason to proxy that. It technically could have been Raven, could have been a liberator out of a tech lab, but it's just no cloak banshee makes like no sense. So technically could have been all those things, but if we react as if it's a battle cruiser, that's fine. And Cyclone Raven, separate control group to your army. This is your anti banshee squad. Also turns out to be a pretty sick anti battle cruiser squad. So you'll notice that you just lock on, so you just A move, it'll lock on itself, and then you just stay out of range. But don't get too far, or you will run out. A lock on does 400 damage over 14 seconds, so you're going to take a beating during that 14 seconds. Your second lock on will kill it. He does teleport home, so very well done by my opponent. But notice we immediately grabbed all of my units, and we're like, hey, let's try see if we can kill that before the second BC comes out. Or we can catch the second BC and already do damage before it gets in my mineral line. And, um, and yeah. So yeah, so and, and this was not one base, obviously this was off an expand, but it was a bit of a later expand. So I just dropped some auto turrets just to, to do whatever. They didn't kill much. I think we got only three SCVs, but we wasted some mining time. We ran the Raven home and we killed it. 
double manual lock on to kill that. So the only adjustment from here, I was like, you know what? I'll play really safe. Let's assume there's extra BCs, which there isn't because we've killed the star port. But let's assume. So what do we do? We built up to three cyclones. We added a third raven, which we weren't planning to do initially, and we got magfield. And then we swapped the star port onto the reactor and started building Vikings. At that point, the only change to our normal path is that we're adding Vikings in our production cycle. Still get an armory, get three more factories, and we can continue our normal plan. So I think that's really cool. And this should get us to Diamond League this game, guys. So a nice win here over Alco Hulk, who tried to get us with a BC rush and probably does a lot of damage with that pretty consistently because their follow-up was super loose. They rebuilt a tech lab, but we're only building Vikings out of it. They built missile turrets for some reason. I don't know what those are for. And then they basically just did a really slow bio transition while floating lots of money. So the opponent here, I think, really banking on using some good Battlecruiser micro to get some momentum. And the follow-up just wasn't able to keep track with us, who, what do we do? The moment we deflect a pressure, we get out of the chaos, we resume the build, we hit the macro. What could I have done a lot better in the second half of Platinum today, guys? Let me know what I've screwed up. I know I've screwed up one thing. Where this shit is... Where, where's Gary and Bruce? Where are Gary and Bruce in any of these games? I mean, it's good that we're doing wall-offs a little bit more. It's good that we're doing spotting depots, but at some point they should just be in the same spot in the main, building a nice tight grid of depots non-stop and never going back. No queuing back to work. Gary and Bruce, the depot builders, weren't doing their job. And that's why I floated a lot of money. I got supply blocked way too many times in this game and a lot of the games today. So what's the big thing here? When you start doing new builds or trying out new things, it's easy to get excited and go away from your base habits. Now, this is especially easy for me because what I've been teaching you guys are no longer my base habits. I have moved beyond them. I have evolved beyond what I am teaching you guys. It's how I got good initially and got to Grandmaster, but I've gone beyond non-stop depot builders. Sometimes I'll be doing depot builders for a minute or two, but more often than not, I'm much more manual with my depot building these days so it is it is an issue um should you have three scvs building constantly or just one so normally from about 40 supply you have one depot builder non-stop gary and bruce normally joins him when you get your full two base production up right now if you get to three base production technically you could add a third depot builder i tend to never do that and the reason is i'll just go oh we're kind of close to the supply i'll grab a few scvs build a few depots as a one-off bonus and queue them back to minerals but basically you can go two depots, three depots, and, and that is kind of kind of what's happened there. I have gone beyond Grandmaster, guys. I am about rank 40, rank 30, 40 on the GM, on the NA server, the most elite server where everyone's a pro gamer who plays only serious games. So don't doubt me, guys. Don't doubt me. My Terran's almost five, six at the moment. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely depot builders is something that we should always have. And um, other than that, it's interesting because we showed you guys how to do so many different build adjustments today. Now, if you guys are watching this show and you're trying to like write notes, today's, today's show, the Platinum section in general, has been so much variability. And I think what you guys have to focus on is focus on the build that's written in the document, okay? Focus on the fact that no matter what chaos happened, what opening I did, what units I did, we always converged back on the same path. And you need to develop this skill. Third command center, get both gases, or just one if we've already taken the third. Get, get the armory, get the extra factories, get the engineering bay, make a shitload of tanks and hellions and go smack a bitch. And we did this every single time, right? No matter what happened in the early game, we always did that. So just keep in mind your build order. And we showed you a very a, a different opening as well. So if you guys don't like the hellion lib from the previous session, so if we go back to the previous session, right? We've got the modified version of the original build where we're going really quick Hellions. We're getting four Hellions and we're, we're rallying them in and we're getting two Liberators and we're doing a really greedy follow-up. It's a super like, I'm pinning my opponent back with harassment and macroing up. And if they are being super aggressive, I have to completely change my like plans and react in crazy ways. I, feel, I still think it's a great build order and it'll get you pretty good if you execute it tightly. But I think we definitely realize, whoa, sorry guys, scrolling down that this build order here is just gonna be a little bit more friendly to players who prefer that very consistent and reliable opening. If you like to have your artillery behind the line, the bunker filled with marines, the siege tank on the high ground, the cyclone to defend the oracle every game, 
we saw how solid that opening is today because I blocked a few early attacks. Um, and yes, it delayed my harassment, but we still had some really good macro behind it. And we saw the power of that. So we showed the early tech lab. So it's Marine, Factory, Second Marine, Tech Lab, or if you want to keep it simple, just one Marine and the Factory. The, the Second Marine is a little bit bonus. And we basically built a Cyclone into a tank with pretty much every single build we did today, except one of the early Widow Mine builds where we got in trouble because we didn't do that, and it was not a good idea. So this is actually awesome, guys. I, I really think we've learned a lot of things. We still go back into the same transition afterwards. Um, six Factories, Tanks, Hellbats, shift queuing those tanks forward and um, we did also a lot of i didn't really talk about it too much guys but we did a lot of scanning we did a lot of scanning today looking at our opponent's army going that army's super fucking small let's just basically move right in if we were facing more big scary armies and there was a few games where it happened you saw me siege much further back because i want i didn't want to move up and siege on their army if they've got a big scary army i want to be sieged before the fight happened and then i was inching the tanks forward a lot more cautiously but you guys also saw maybe half of the games today where it was like, oh, they have no units compared to me. I can literally just go and just siege in their natural in between their bases and, and it's game over. Yeah. Um, so I hope this helped you guys out. Don't forget to ask any questions or anything, guys, as we are in diamond now. I think. I think we're in diamond. It won't give us promo, but we're in diamond. Yeah. So guys, we've just entered diamond three. And that's going to sum up Platinum 2. Awesome. We don't get the promotion. We're going to get that on the start of the next the next show. GG. Stupid, stupid ladder lock. But next week we'll be back. We'll get that Diamond 3 promo. Actually, it'll give us a Plat 1 promo first game and then a Diamond 3 promo the second game, maybe. I'm not sure how it'll work. Might just put me straight in Diamond 3, actually, I think is what it'll do. Anyway, guys, that'll be awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next episode of Bronze to Jam.